Dave Chappelle's new comedy special is pretty good. I think it uh, wasn't as good as Sticks and Stones. Of course, the critics are outraged, saying it was just bad. I love how this new generation of woke media critic ha hates everything that most people likes, whatever. But of course, you see it in Rotten Tomatoes. The audience absolutely loved it. But it's generating a lot of controversy, which is a stupid thing to say because it's just a fringe group of woke weirdos. However, it's still a lot of people at Netflix. First, we heard a trans woman stormed into a meeting and started yelling. Then we heard someone at Netflix leaked information about how much Dave Chappelle got paid. Now we're hearing 1,000 woke employees are planning a virtual shutdown where they will not be working. Netflix has even fired the leaker and claimed we are on the right side of history, which is kind of odd considering cuties. But sure, try and stand on that hill, Netflix. I don't think anyone is going to be defending you for the most part. But I think most of us like Dave Chappelle, and this just goes to show, I think, you know, kind of optimism here, kind of being optimistic because it doesn't look like their protests are going to work. Netflix doesn't care. They, they make too much money off this. People like Dave Chappelle. So we got a lot to talk about. We got, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about the economic collapse. The, the uh, holidays are on the verge of, well, the holidays will happen. I don't want to say they won't happen, but pumpkin shortages, turkey shortages, Christmas tree shortages, well, you name it. That's all thanks to Joe Biden. But don't worry, Jen Psaki says this is good news. It means people are buying stuff. Yeah, right. Okay. Joining us to talk about a lot of these topics and probably a whole bunch of comic book stuff is Nerd Roddick. Hi, how you doing? I'm great. You want to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Gary Beekler. I come to, uh, from nerdrotic.com and nerdrotic here on YouTube. It's my first time here. I'm happy to be here. Happy to talk to everybody. It's uh, impressive. Is uh, impressive the compound? <laughs> like I, our new studio? Yeah. Awesome. I, I love the new studio, love the house, love everything about it, and happy to be here. It's an honor. Yep. Howdy, my name is Luke Radowski here of wearechange.org. And first off, uh, it looks like Instagram, I might be wrong, took off a warning before people followed me on my Instagram page. So thank you guys for uh, helping me rectify that situation by having hundreds of people follow my account. Second off, I personally want to thank YouTube for demonetizing my channel a few years ago, because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have an awesome t-shirt store and shirts like this that I'm wearing right now that say, <laughs> I'm Joe Biden and I forgot this message, which you could exclusively get on thebestpoliticalshirts.com. So thank you, YouTube and Instagram. Never thought I would say that. Um, you also have a crystal around your neck. What is that, quartz? Um, this was a gift. I forgot exactly I like it. what it, it was. It's not, a, it's not a quartz. It's something else. I forgot. Uh, um, this is my favorite comic book of all time. I'm glad you're here, Gary. This is the Infinity Gauntlet number four. It's epic. This is when comics were real. And can you tell me off the bat, what were you going to say? What's your favorite comic? Oh, what's my favorite? If I have a single favorite comic, it's a run. So it's uh, Daredevil, Frank Miller's Daredevil run. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that. I read that when I was 12. It was epic. Uh, the first time that I saw, they had killed somebody before, but first time I had read uh, a character get killed. Yeah, that's something uh, about that. And there was something that impressed a lot of us 12-year-olds back then who were very impressionable, but Frank Miller's art and his writing was just next level. Good. Well, uh, maybe but we can that go was more. brilliant. Yeah, this series is great. Well, I'm Ian Cross. Yep. I'm happy to be here. Thanks. And I am also showing off Luke's merch from the, what is it called? What's your site? Luke? Thebestpoliticalshirts.com. That's right. And he gave this to me for Christmas, and now I have it. It looks way better on more, me than it does on him. I'm more, just, I'm, I'm going to do the Christmas <laughs> shopping now because of the shortages. Yes, so let me know what you guys like. Right? Yeah, awesome. I'm yeah. also here pushing buttons Shop in the corner, early. getting better at my job again. And uh, yeah, sponsor. The economy is on fire, but don't fret, my friends. You can still get all of your essential Vitamins and minerals. Well, I don't know about all of them, but you can get <laughs> Eternal Reds by going to drinkrightfeelwell.com. This is BioTrust's blend of eight super fruits, beets, and berries. You mix into your drink, and it's exactly what I have done because it tastes really, really good. It's it's actually really good. I would I would say it's like it's like flavor aid, you know, whatever those things are. You mix them in, but it's only it's it's healthy. So it comes with 250 milligrams of vitamin C. If you're not getting, you know, your vitamins, minerals, or your vegetables and, you know, your leafy greens or whatever, you can definitely do something like this to try and supplement, and it makes your drinks taste delicious. Head over to drinkrightfeelwell.com. You'll get 51% off of Biotrust Eternal Reds today. And they say you'll get a 60-day money-back guarantee, free shipping on every order, over $50 in gifts with every order. That, wow. For every order today, Biotrust donates a nutritious meal to a hungry child in your honor. Through their partnership with NoKidHungry.org to date, Biotrust has provided over 5 million meals to hungry kids. Please help Biotrust hit their goal of 6 million meals this year. You'll get free VIP live health and fitness coaching from Biotrust team of expert nutrition and health coaches for life with every order. And their free new e-report, the top 11 foods that boost circulation. Now, one of the things I really like about this is that the vitamin C is in it. And I realize, 
you know, especially I'm doing more, uh, I'm not eating a lot of sugar or breads or fruits. I'm eating more vegetables and meats. And that means I'm not getting as much vitamin C as I used to. So that's why I've been taking this stuff especially. But ultimately, I'll just say this. When we got the sample, it tasted so good. We made this awesome drink with it. I was like, yo, can we get a bunch of this stuff? We'll definitely do shout, a shout out for this because this is like a healthy way to make a delicious drink. I'll tell you that. So go to drinkrightfeelwell.com. Special shout out, Biotrust. Thanks for being a sponsor of the show. Go to timcast.com. Become a member. We have a new show, which hopefully is launching today, The Green Room. So we have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of footage and shows from when guests have shown up and hanging out in the green room, playing pool, talking about weird stuff, time travel, just kind of nonsensical things, more fun and apolitical stuff from some of your most famous, uh, from, from some of your most favorite political people. And that'll start going up on Fridays. So definitely become a member. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. And now let's get into that first big story. Dave Chappelle. We got this story from Gizmodo and there's a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts here. 1,000 Netflix employees are reportedly planning a walkout to protest new Chappelle special. Staffers are threatening to revolt after executives doubled down on claims that content on screen doesn't directly translate to real world harm. All right, I'm, 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 well, I'm in a tough spot right here, guys. Hmm. Okay, Netflix, they did cuties. Mm -hmm. That was messed up. <clears throat> they also do Big Mouth. I also think that's pretty messed up. Yes. But they're defending Dave Chappelle from a woke mob. What do we do? Conflicted. Take it one situation <laughs> at a time, mm. I guess. I, I, I'm not subscribed to Netflix anymore, but I support them in supporting Dave Chappelle. Uh, and it, we're starting to see certain, little, certain things break down in our system as time goes. And having uh, this is going to be a, a, a huge face off between two groups, we'll just say. It's important. I mean, no yeah. one's perfect. If someone does good, you compliment them. If mm. something, if someone does something bad, you criticize them. Uh, there's a lot of things to criticize Netflix, especially with its founder, especially with its history, especially with its ha its past and the psychological uh, symbolism and a lot of its content. But when we look at the Dave Chappelle special, you know, unless you watched it, I don't think you should be commenting on it because I just finished watching it today, and it's not his best work. But it's it's powerful. It's impactful because it. it I don't want to ruin this. So spoiler alert: if you haven't watched it yet, you might want to just mute it for like two minutes while I talk here. I mean, th th there's a story at the end that revolves around Daphne Dorman, a friend of Dave Chappelle, mm -hmm. that according to her family committed suicide because the woke mob went after her because a, she supported Dave Chappelle. This is a trans woman. This is a mm -hmm. trans woman that Dave Chappelle was friends with, was doing comedy shows with, was helping, supporting, and, and treating like a student of the art. And Daphne tweeted, uh, I tweeted this on my official Twitter account, uh, look, we are changed, because I, 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 I sent out the tweet that got her attacked by the hate mob. Okay. And it's an important one to note here to see what she tweeted here, uh, because the family members are literally saying it was this hate mob that led to her committing suicide recently when she defended Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones uh, oh, Netflix special. Saying. Um, and she said, quote, punching down requires you to consider yourself superior to another group. Dave Chappelle doesn't consider himself better than me in any way. He isn't punching up or punching down. He's punching lines. <gasps> that's his job. And he's a master of his craft. This, that's this, what this, that's what she wrote. And this is yeah. what uh, um, I mean, it's a partial spoiler. But in the special, I mean, a large portion of it is, is dedicated to this story with a series of jokes in it. And he has this line where he's like, man, I don't know what they said to her, but they drove her to climb up on top of a building and, and, and jump Jeez. off. And, and then he tells a joke about it. And, and then, you know, everyone laughs and he says, Daphne would have loved that joke because she was part of my tribe, a comedian. Mm -hmm. And see, that, that's the thing, right? This is an individual, a trans woman who is like, yes, people can do jokes. It can be offensive. It's like it is what it is. Dave Chappelle, we totally get it. But this woke mob, they need to control comedy, art. Laughter, you know, I, maybe it's cliche to say communist, right? That's what the Soviets did. They, they can't allow people to have free thought that would challenge and, and spread. So they specifically target it. Now, these people are planning on protesting. I think it shows, man, their, 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 their power is waning. Now, now, let me just say about, about Netflix. They did cuties. <laughs> man, that's messed up. They do Big Mouth. You guys know what Big Mouth is? Yes. You no, do? that's uh, Nick Kroll. Big Mouth yeah. is a show yeah. about... Um, Cartoon. 
like pre like uh, children going through puberty Coming and it's extremely age. sexually explicit mm -hmm. yep. and i'm just like yo it's a cartoon it's not the same as cuties but it's still like weird like what they're doing like i don't know man i saw some people like hey you should watch it and i'm like i guess and i was at, I was at this guy's house and they put it on and i'm like dude this is what are you watching man like i don't want i can't even say what some of these episodes are about because youtube would 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 literally like demonetize or derank or even ban us if i gave you the synopsis of one one episode I saw, yeah, we'd probably get taken down. Like, you can't even talk about it, but it's on Netflix. Netflix is also the company that fired one of their, I think an executive got fired because he was explaining to staff what words were offensive and should not be said. And in doing so, he said the words. <gasps> and so they freaked out and they fired the guy. Now, with Netflix coming out and defending Dave Chappelle, this is what we got. We, we have to defend them on this one. Because all the people who came out and said, Netflix is evil, oh, I'm canceling my subscription, should be coming back and say, for this, I actually will consider subscribing. Because think about it, even though they did bad things, if there's no redemption for Netflix, they won't change course. Mm. If Netflix feels like, look, we tried, you know, uh, giving these people what they wanted with Dave Chappelle, it wasn't enough, screw it, cut them off, there's no point, we're never going to win them back. If we say, this is what we do like. And we're willing to sign up now because you're defending Dave Chappelle. They're going to be like, hey, hey, do more of this. The woke people aren't buying anything. They don't got money. These are the people that we should be supporting. That's why I think it's important to actually be like, defend Netflix on this one. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, we don't have to always lump everything in when talking about a particular case. And again, case by case basis, there's a lot to criticize Netflix. I mean, it's just weird that the founder... Uh, of Netflix. His uncle is Edward Bernays. He's a nephew of Sigmund <laughs> Freud. That's like that. Wow, really? That, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, this is according to the New York Times and they're reporting on him. So, you know, th th this is obviously an industry that has grown very fast, very rapidly. And I still think it's figuring itself out because you do see a lot of propaganda. You do see a lot of subliminal messaging. You do see a lot of crazy uh, content out there that you don't see on normal television. You do see them taking risks, uh, especially with things like B Black Mirror. There's a lot of predictive programming. There's a lot of conditioning. There's a lot of things that we could say here, but I, I still think by and large, Netflix has expanded. It's, 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 it's at a point where YouTube is trying to become it. So that's, that's power right there, to say the least. How they're going to wield this power, how are they going to move forward, it's going to be very interesting to see, but they're, they're a major powerhouse to contend with. It, it 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 is it is difficult though. I mean, because they still don't, don't they still have cuties up? Yeah. And it's like if, even if you defend Dave Chappelle, they're also getting you to come on mm. board with that kind of garbage. Yeah. So I'll I'll I support them defending. The uh, sorry, I support them defending Dave Chappelle all day long. I'm not going to sign up again until they get rid of cuties. I, I kind of hold the line there. Mm. And it's hard. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. We we need to show people support when they you know like a good if they're a puppy dog, you go good dog when they do yeah. something good. They pee on the floor. You get mad at them. But uh, let, let, let's see what they do in this one instance. And then I will see if I can support it later. It's a weird fight because Dave Chappelle isn't against trans people. He has no. friends that are trans people. He cares about the community. His message is like, hey, stop, stop, stop trying to tell me how to live my life. Stop trying to control every aspect of my existence. Stop trying to cancel people just for trying to make you laugh. And I think that's the bigger takeaway here because, you know, this is all at the end of the day coming to comedy, coming to someone mastering an art, trying to help people, trying to make people's lives better, trying to improve the quality of their mental health by being able to laugh at very tough, difficult situations, mm -hmm. which sadly are, are stigmatized to a point and level where you can't even discuss them honestly on the you know, the major information highways that we have on the internet. You, you, you can't really get the truth about a lot of these issues. You can't really speak about them openly. So the last thing that we have is comedy. So to see this kind of war against comedy, it's troubling. Uh, I have a lot of negative things to say about Netflix on this side. It's a weird fight because it's, it's, it's weird leftists who are, are protesting someone trying to help them and make them laugh, who's essentially on their side in many elements of his existence. You know, it used to be the left used to protest multinational corporations, <laughs> governments, the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, big pharma. That's an old one. There's a lot of dust to wipe off mm. there. I heard Holy uh, cow. Yep. Tucker Carlson critical of the World Trade Organization or something. You know, he's talking about that. And I'm just like, man, to see Tucker Carlson on the side of the WTA protesters from the battle in Seattle is just a weird thing. It really is. Man, but hey, I'll take it, you know. We're in, a, yeah, we're in a weird timeline 
for sure. Uh, I th- I mean, there's that. I want to sit back and kind of watch them eat each other at mm. point times like this. It's just it's fun because they deserve it. <laughs> they do. But um, what what you said earlier, Dave, if you watch the special, yeah, there's no way you can criticize it without watching it because it really is an end to all his Netflix specials. Uh, it really is kind of uh, an epilogue to Sticks and Stones, which is absolutely just epic. It's so good. Uh, and he really says what he means. And it's like what I was noticing was he says really normal stuff that's uh, that's considered controversial now mm-hmm. to where I, I don't even I mean, I'm a guest on a show, so I don't want to repeat it. But he said something very normal about women in the process of giving birth and uh, what that is, uh, you know, compared to. And people were applauding and we're like, yeah, that's something that like really happens every weird? day. It's not. Yeah, it's weird that we're applauding stuff like that. He's now. like women give birth. Yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. What, dude? You know, uh, I talk to a lot of regular people. You know, I go out, we go to the mall. I was at a farm recently talking to some regular people just about life and their opinions are very similar to uh, to all of ours. I think the issue is that these leftists and people at Netflix it's, it's that tweet we pulled up before from Matthew Iglesias where he's like, Twitter is mm-hmm. people who are 95% further left than the average voter arguing that people who are 75% further left than the regular voter are far right or alt right or something. It's exactly it. Netflix thinks Twitter is moderate. And that's like, that's like going into a sewer and thinking you're getting farm fresh vegetables when it's black sludge. You're like literally pouring sewage in a cup. Like, hmm, looks like farm fresh vegetables to me. It's like, dude, that is that is the after effect of all of the refuse and waste and chemicals. That is not real life. This is what you get. These are the shows they make. It's kind of crazy to me that they uh, that they make and and keep making some of these shows. And some some shows get canceled. I don't even know how they de- de- they determine which show is worth keeping. Perhaps they liked Cuties because the controversy was just good for their brand recognition yeah. or something. But a lot of people canceled their membership after that. I did. A lot. Yeah, I did I made sure. Yeah. I made sure. I canceled mine as well. Uh, and, you know, everyone has a friend of a friend anyway to see some <laughs> right. of the latest stuff. <laughs> yep. That's how I watched, uh, you know, today's uh, Dave Chappelle special. But uh, this is a very interesting uh, dichotomy because it used to be Netflix used to allow you to rate uh, the, the videos that you would watch out of five stars. And then, of course, came Amy, Amy Schumer, Schumer and yes. uh, absolutely nuked Leather and destroyed special. that system because people are like, no, we don't like this. We don't support this. And they didn't like that. And they got rid of the people's voice on Netflix. That was hilarious. Yeah. No, just, it just awful. That was a problem. <laughs> yeah. Now you have that, um, that Hannah, Hannah Gadsby, I think her oh, name gosh, is. gosh, yeah. And she's complaining about it as well because they're like, look, we have an eclectic group of voices. Check out the story we got from The Hollywood Reporter. Netflix fires employee for leaking confidential information on Chappelle's special. The employee leaked financial data to Bloomberg, which reported an October 13th, ar- October 13th article that Netflix spent $24.1 million on Dave Chappelle's The Closer. Woo! Oof. Not only is Dave Chappelle smacking down wokeness and just speaking his mind, he's getting paid that kind of money to do it? Nice. Wow, yeah, man. That was half of what he walked away uh, from Comedy Central for. So he's, he's made it back, I'm guessing. And good for Dave. Yeah. Well, he this also said he's not going to speak about this again. He says it's yep. over. I'm not going to be doing um, yep. specials. I'm done. It, wow. I, I got to say, watching the special, it feels like they got him. Dave Chappelle was like, I'm, I can't do this anymore. He said, I'm not going to make these jokes anymore because if they don't get it, I don't know. I can't do it. Dave Chappelle gave in. That's too bad because he's a cultural force and he can change people's minds. He did it before he walked away from the Chappelle show. Just went to Africa for a while. It's checked out. He does what he wants. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it was because um, mm-hmm. I think his story was that when he did the D- Chappelle show, he did a sketch that was critical of racism. But the people like he talked to someone who didn't know that's what it was. And, and it kind of got him mad that he was like, is that what you think I'm trying to say? I remember reading a story about that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's been a long time. I'm getting the story wrong, but something like that. Here's where I think is really crazy. Netflix says we are on the right side of history in row on internal message board over the comedian's jokes. That that to me is is the crazy, crazy mm-hmm. thing. He says, quote, we let go, a spokesperson said, we let go of an employee for sharing confidential commercially sensitive information outside the company. We understand this employee may have been motivated by disappointment and hurt with Netflix, but maintaining a culture of trust and transparency is core to our company. The longtime employee was fired because they leaked that information. But to say that they're on the right side of history, I do believe that our commitment to artistic expression and pleasing our members is the right long-term choice for Netflix and that we are on the right side, but only time will tell. Hmm. That's what he said, apparently what they said to the uh, New York Times. 
this is what you get when you uh, let when you let this stuff go on for too long. And now it's biting them in the ass. So good. Uh, and that part of it, I'm I'm extremely happy about to see them suffer these consequences. Yeah, I mean, that being said, maybe not supporting them is still the right move. Maybe. It, I, oh, I don't support centralized um, entertainment networks like this. I think you need a decentralized network that's going to ha- propagate the art because anytime you have a gatekeeper, you're going to have people saying yes or no, and that's the problem. It's not that they said no. It's saying it's giving someone the ability to say yes or no and get super rich off it. Well, on that note, there are a lot of different options that you have. You can let the free market decide where you're going to spend your entertainment dollars. I use Hulu. That's my choice. I don't know if you completely agree with them or whatever, but you can use Disney Plus. You can use Hulu. You can use Bro, like DirecTV and Amazon. So awful. Hmm? They're all so Oh, awful. I know. They're all bad in different ways. Hulu did that tweet where they were like, remember a couple years ago? Don't wear Halloween costumes that are insensitive. <laughs> and I'm like, why is why why is get my bent. online streaming platform telling you what to Cause, wear? Because you get and a uh, central authority that yeah. builds up millions, billions of followers, and then they sell the company to some idiot that gets mm. the that gets the Twitter account and of 40 million people and can tell you to do stupid yeah. stuff. And now most of these yeah. platforms are filled with ads. You're you're paying a premium just for a specific. Uh, channel and now Amazon, Hulu, all of them are like uh, Paramount. They're all playing ads before you get to watch the content that you paid for. <laughs> like it's yep. just another slap in the face of, to the consumer. And that's probably why they're not doing that well. And they're going to all have to. Yeah, they're, they're one of them is probably going to get bought up by uh, like Paramount. It might be for sale by Apple at some times. And they're way too late in the ad game. But the reason. Uh, you know, I, I think Netflix is way too powerful uh, and they're a billion dollar corporation that does make way, you know, they, they were, uh, this is a rumor, okay, but they were thinking about uh, going into content creation like YouTube. They thought mm-hmm. about it seriously three years ago, ditched out of oh, it. Really? Yeah, they, it was just too, they were too far behind. Right. Uh, uh, but their infrastructure, I had, a, I had a good friend who worked on, worked with them in the early days. That infrastructure, they, that, they worked on that for years. So they are light years ahead wow. of any other streaming service for a long time. Uh, they have patents on certain menus. That's why you're on Disney Plus, you're on Paramount Plus, and you're like, why is this menu set? Well, they own half of it, half, most wow. of the menus and stuff. They own the patents on that, so they can't wow. go. Remember, what, wasn't Amazon going to do a YouTube thing a few years back? Remember that? <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they're doing some kind of live streaming thing now, which Twitch. is weird. No, on Amazon, on the website. They're That's doing weird. like, here, watch this live stream, huh. which is like usually someone trying to you know sell products. That's pretty weird. No. Oh, wait, oh, Amazon uh, Live. Is that what that is? Yeah. Is this the right side of history is the question. Oh, I don't think so. Centralized no. authorities are not. We're not going to look back on having a gatekeeper is, is the right side. It's going to. I guess I looked at it like freedom of expression, not centralized authority. So I suspect what's happening with Netflix is that they're looking at Twitter and they're looking at their marketing data and they're like, okay, Twitter is really not real life. And what's going to be best for us is actually having diverse viewpoints and diverse opinions, whether everyone agrees with stuff like cuties or whether everyone agrees with stuff like Dave Chappelle or not, which I think is probably smart and will do them well in the long term. You know, the challenge is... uh, this is where our culture's at. I mean, you've got Dave Chappelle, the closer on Netflix. It's a point right. of conversation. People people group around it. And that means people have to get a subscription to be able to watch it or, you know, borrow a friend. But for the most part, it means more subscriptions. And that's exactly what Netflix wants. Then they'll probably just keep doing the same controversial stuff back and forth, to generate more controversy, which is good for their business no matter what happens. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I I want. I like Dave Chappelle. I'm going to side with Dave Chappelle and not Netflix. And I think the only reason... Uh, Netflix is supporting Dave Chappelle is because they gave him twenty four million dollars, and right. it's just they're weighing out like what you know because if they if they pull, pull it, that pull special, show, yeah, uh, that, that 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 they're just weighing what the backlash is going to be, what's going to be worse, and they're are they right publicly now, they're publicly traded too, aren't they? Yes, yeah. Imagine explaining to the to, to your shareholders why we dumped twenty four million dollars in Dave Chappelle only to pull so. it within like a week or something, or it's been a little bit longer than that, but still. Uh, I. I Having a thousand, if I think if a thousand employees do walk out, that might make a difference. I mean, there's a lot of people there. I don't yeah, know if that know. is actually going to happen. I mean, a that thousand, sounds like a I mean, plan. I mean, who's saying that? Like, where's the claim coming from? There's going to be a thousand exactly. people coming out on protest. I mean, maybe insiders. In, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that just sources. seems extremely optimistic. You could you could never ask protesters how many people are at a protest because they're they're always going to. 
uh, exaggerate the number. And it's just ridiculous to, to think that's going to happen. But but uh, have any of these people watched the show? Because I think if they do, they would get a sense of understanding. It's not, and, a, it's not and about that, though. I know. Of course it's not. You but go to these people and you're like, here's the video clip of what he actually said. And they're going to be like, you're a bigot. Yeah. And it's like, yep. okay. Netflix net worth is two hundred and eighty billion. Whoa, really? Yikes. As of wow. October fourteen, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whoa, man. look how that has shot up in the last year. Mm. Yeah, because people got to watch something Everybody's from like one hundred and eighty yeah. to two hundred. I, I guess here's here's the question. You know, uh, uh, do you think that we're going to see more companies try and embrace anti woke stuff? Because look at what Bill Maher said. Bill Maher said for the first time he's playing to a mixed audience. He said people are hungry for critiques of the woke left. It's like right to the party, Bill. But I get it. Uh, yeah, I, I, he's way late to that party. People are starving for stuff like that, but I don't think they're going to go to broadcast entertainment for it. I think they're finding it right here and right yeah. on YouTube Daily with other Wire, people. Yeah. And I think they are way late. I would like to see the establishment uh, turn it around. I just have very little faith. They they need a lot of they need a lot of failures, uh, which they haven't had. They've been able to either hide them that, or you know who knows what's true anymore. Like they're starting to hide. Uh, TV failures now they're start, you know they're, they're they're not giving they don't have to give out numbers for streaming services you know you know what I don't believe I don't believe anyone liked Kimmy Schmidt I don't either I do did you watch it I watched it I you like liked it. it I like lies it. I'm a I'm a I'm such a big fan of 30 uh, Rock I will tell you why I like Kimmy Schmidt because she was trapped underground in a bunker and as someone who was homeschooled and isolated from the rest of the world for my entire upbringing, that really resonated with me. So I don't know if it was that, one. that that made the jokes funny, I guess. Oh, I liked it. So I this is cute. Look, I, I watch, you know, I just binged 30 Rock again because I periodically watch 30 Rock because it's amazing. And I just laugh nonstop. It's brutally hilarious. And then I'm like, I, I finished it and I was like, okay, I'm going to watch Kimmy Schmidt. I tried to watch it before. I got to watch it because it's the... It's, it's, it's Tina Fey, it's a very similar style of humor, and then I'm two episodes in with my eyes just like half closed, like not a single laugh, maybe a chuckle, like, eh. and then I was like, how, I look at the, I look at the ratings on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's like award-winning number one, and I'm like, dude, I understand how the media lies, because I pay attention to politics. I'm looking at these shows, and I'm like, I really don't believe people are, are that into this show, and it only got, I think, four seasons, which says to me, it was doing bad, people didn't like it. The media lies to try and make money, and then ultimately they cancel it because people weren't watching. That's my opinion. I don't know. Jack Murphy said he liked it. Maybe that's just me then. I don't think you're ever going to get truly anti-woke, sustainable anti-woke or, or like edgy stuff out of corporate media ever. I mean, you yeah. already have broadcast things. You can't say the F word. You can't talk about this. I can't joke about this on this show. So it's really not anti. It's not like a comedy show where I, I can be free. There, and, there's, there's always and corporations limits. can be sold to some idiots. So you need a decentralized way for, for the comedy to thrive, I think. There, there, there are always limits, right? People need to understand this, too. We, we, this is what gets lost in the free speech debate. You can't go on Tucker Carlson's show and say a lot of things. They'd ban you. I think Jesse Kelly, was, was he the one who got? Well, it's not or was it Michael Knowles? It's not yeah. Tucker. No, it's it was, CNN. It was, or it's, it's Fox. Fox. Yeah. yeah. If you right, go right, on right. Tucker's show with him with a, that owns the network and has like owns the ISP, he could let you do whatever you want. But it's, a, it's, it's about, um, look, the reason we don't swear on this show is not because YouTube's going to ban us for doing it. Tons of people swear. It's because we've gotten emails from people being like, hey, my kids are with me when the show's on. You know, it, it, would you guys mind keeping the swears down? And I'm like, we don't lose anything by not swearing. And there are kids who are watching and we really want younger people to like hear the message and be with their parents. I'm like, that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So we ask people like, you know, don't swear. But if you do, we're not going to cry about choice. anything. Yeah. So like the same thing is true for a lot of shows that will be like, hey, you know, we have our limits on what we're willing. But to, like in 2008, to you could swear and it was almost like the kids loved it. And that was when Larry and Sergey owned the company. I'm not, and then I'm, they I'm, sold but it. I'm not talking about YouTube. I'm talking about a, uh, we, got an, we got an email. We get emails periodically um, from b back when we used to swear a lot more. And they'd be like, hey, man, big fans of the show. I was watching last night with my you know, husband and my kids. But I'm a Puritan. And, and they were like, I just, you know, when you guys start swearing a lot, we like, don't want our kids to, to hear that kind of language. And then we're like, all right, I understand. We, we, we want to we give proper values and manners to children. And we can do this show and we can be something like that, that, that people can listen to sometimes because yeah. we do get spicy stories. 
when when their kids are around. I respect that. I do. And yeah. so we're like, try not to swear. If you swear, it happens. You know, we're not going to cry about it. I had a couple of those emails too. I remember calling Bill Gates uh, a special name. <laughs> I can't name here. Sure. And then I get an email saying that uh, one of uh, the viewers toddlers was just repeating it, running around, <laughs> oh, saying Luke. it around their here's, here, here's And they're my, like, thanks. Uh, yeah. here's, here's my favorite. He's like, I'm James. not going to. And, and then people were like, I'm not just going to watch your show. I can't watch your show because of this. So I understand that. That's why family friendly show but on my show as well. Yeah, as long as we're getting the ideas across and we're able to talk about important subjects, I got no problem with being, okay, we won't swear. My favorite was when we were talking about a, a group of people that are all in a big circle together. Yes. And they're all patting each other on the back. Oh, yeah. A, a complimenting each other for being jerks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it yeah, was a circle of jerks. Of mm -hmm. jerks. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. And we call it something else. <laughs> yeah. uh, more adult. And then I got a couple emails and they were. All, one of them was like, hey, man, big fan. Uh, I just had to spend, you know, the past 20, 15 minutes after your show explaining to my kid what that meant. <laughs> and uh, just wanted to let you know that, like, when we're in the car and I'm taking my kids somewhere and we, we put the show on and I'm like, we'll say a yeah. circle of jerks all patting each other on the back instead of, you know, the, the other way to say it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, when it comes know. to comedy, though, you, you can't let your audience decide how you run your show. So this isn't a comedy show. If it was, you know take the censors that, off and, and that i agree with too like when it comes to comedy someone could be like hey man you can't say that around me because i got kids like it's a comedy show you shouldn't bring your kids this yeah, is, this you is where we yeah. get like unless we're doing children's comedy like why did why did the chicken cross the road uh, <laughs> funny joke uh, yeah, sure I, was. I wouldn't watch that on youtube anyway it'd be yeah, creepy yeah. and probably against you know whatever that new law is that copa whatever the heck it was oh yeah yeah the anti-kids thing yeah that everybody freaked out about i want to talk that? about i want to talk about squid game yeah. We should talk about Squid Game. Yeah. yeah. What about it? So I think Squid Game is, I, I don't think it's overtly political. Apparently, you know, you were telling me, uh, Gary, that it was like, there's like a political message in Squid Game. Yeah, the writer, at least that's what he said. My takeaway from it was communism bad. That was my takeaway from it. Okay, so now I'm going to say this. For those that are listening, spoiler alert, if yeah. you haven't finished Squid Game, it's an awesome show. Yeah. I prefer watching it in a, the original Korean with, with subtitles. I think it's fantastic. With the dub, you lose a lot of that like reverb and like natural sound. It's kind of weird. Uh, so spoiler alert. I'm going to say it again. We are going to spoil this show to uh, the, the to kingdom come. To kingdom come. <laughs> there we go. Spoiler alert. Uh, so what, 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 what was it about? You mentioned that the creator had said something and it was like. The creator called it a fable for uh, modern day capitalism, mm -hmm. uh, but also for life <clears throat> and the competitiveness of life. Uh, and that message, I, it's it's not subtle at the end, uh, which I won't ruin for anybody, but it's not subtle at the end. And that messaging was there. And, you know, some people can't get past it. And I understand that. But I thought it was a damn good yeah, story. But what, what, what was the messaging? Like, what, what do you think the message conveyed? <clears throat> from well, it, that it's a it basically it's a cold and cruel system there in that fable. You know, there is no resolution except for at the end, they create their own enemy, quote unquote. But um that's what I got out of it. All right, all right. We're on. Uh, just for context, okay, because those of you that are sticking around, even though we told you spoilers are here, I'm going to give you the quick breakdown of the, of the show. It's a bunch of desperate people in debt, and then all of a sudden they get an opportunity to play in a game, but the game is brutal, and you die in it. But if you don't, you win, I think, I think it's like equivalent of U.S., uh, like 35 to $40 million is the, is the translation. So it's like 45 billion Korean won or something. Now we're going to get into, uh, again, I warn you, spoilers. I think the whole thing is the perfect example of somebody who thinks they're opposing capitalism, but just makes communism and wokeness look really, really dumb. Huh. And the show ends up being, in my opinion, more anti-communist than anything. So one of the big themes in the show is that everyone is equal. They're, they all enter the game as equals, and they're allowed to play as equals. And there's an arc in the show where it's like, somebody violates the equality and so they kill him. And they were like, that's the worst thing you could have done is, is strip the equality. But now, here's how the show ends. You've been warned. In this equal system, everyone dies but one person who gets all of the money. Huh. Okay, so that doesn't sound to me like capitalism. In capitalism, we recognize not everybody is equal. Not everybody does have an equal chance. We do want equal opportunity, but some people are poor and some people are rich. In this system, everyone is wearing the same clothes in the same room, being brutalized by, by the powers that ultimately results in one person having all the wealth and everyone dying. That is not capitalism. In capitalism, there's too much food. 
People are morbidly obese, and there are, ho- there are homeless people who are fat. In communism, everybody wears the same clothes. They have limited access to anything. They get garbage food every day. They're like, okay, the game's over. Here's the food you get. And they get trash. And they're fighting each other because they're starving. That, to me, is an indictment of communism. And if this guy who made the show is actually like, it's it's actually capitalism that's bad, I'm like, it just goes to show this is a person who made a great show but was really dumb and didn't understand they were actually critiquing yeah. communism. It's like they took him out of a capitalistic system where they were doing pretty bad to a communistic system where they were doing really, really bad mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> and, were, yeah. and were executed by the state, which usually happens <laughs> under communism. Right. Uh, I mean, for, for like childish whims. Exactly. And, and that's literally what happens under communism. Uh, look up, uh, you know, what happened in China, what happened in Russia, what happened in, uh, you, you know, in Europe as well. Yeah. So there's a long history. There's a long context to, you know, people just being purged, taken away. Another very interesting aspect of that story is the masks that the very rich people were wearing were kind of similar to the same masks that the Rothschilds were pictured wearing at some of their private parties and gals a couple decades ago. So I, I saw that right away. I was like, wait, 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 that's that's that, that's the elites doing this. And, uh, you know, I, th- I thought I thought of the movie more of a critique about the, the ruling elites. Uh, because it's it's essentially again spoiler alert rich people coming together to watch the average poor people struggling people kill each other over money um, and and you know there's some uh, important kind of parallels there the movie I'm sorry the series is kind of gory so if you're sensitive kind to that stuff I wouldn't I wouldn't watch it I watched it. I was like Tim you gotta watch it you're like eh. <laughs> but but it, it you watched it and it is very thought provoking it is very emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, and it definitely pulls at the heartstrings in many different ways. I looked this up. Luke, you ain't kidding. What is there's this? A, there's a bunch of photos from this Rothschild's yep, yep, yep. party where they're all wearing these masks that heck? are similar to the, the Squid Game thing. Yeah. But that's probably what he was doing, the creator. Yeah. It was yeah. a guy, right, who created it? I'm saying Well, he, the story, I, not, I'm, hearing a lot of different rep- I'm hearing a lot of different reports about this guy saying that he lost a bunch of teeth because of the stress during the production of this movie. Mm-hmm. I heard that he tried to get this movie done for years and it kept getting denied. So, mm-hmm. the, te- uh, the series, you mean? Yeah, 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 the, the, the series. Uh, but, but yeah, I remember seeing those masks automatically thinking, wait, wait, wait. I know I saw these masks before. They're at the private gallows and private meetings of the super rich that already do take place. When you do look at the very powerful people in our world that manipulate the system for I'll, their own I'll, personal I'll, benefit. I'll put it this way. Capitalism isn't the problem. Communism doesn't exist. It's just this idealized system. We might as well call it unicornism. Mm. The real problem is corruption and corporatism. So, and the left says capitalism when they mean corporatism. I think that's exactly the problem. I think that's what he's doing with the masks. He thinks that the Rothschilds embody capitalism. They do not. No, they embody elitism. That's they're the biggest promoters involved. and pushers of communism and dis- destroyers right. of actual real uh, you know, free markets. Uh, another in- interesting aspect was the fat guy. I mean, he looked almost exactly like Newt Gingrich. Mm. I talked to Newt Gingrich a couple times. I went up to him, asked him straight up to his face, hey, what did you do at the Bohemian Grove when you shipped in specifically <laughs> male prostitutes? Uh, mm. And he was sweating up a storm. I did this like five times to him. He really doesn't like being asked those questions. But we got to understand here, there is some level of, of reality when it comes to super rich people coming together in the middle of the woods doing very weird things. That does happen. It's called the Bohemian Grove. There's also other kind of secret societies and offshoots to these secret societies. Remember when Bilderberg was yeah. a conspiracy theory? Huh. Yeah, they said That's it didn't the exist. Yeah. The they thing. said it didn't exist a few years ago. Remember and I was they, there at the meetings. Be like, it's here. It's happening. Remember, They're like, no, he's crazy. Remember when they sent that dude from the guardian down he was really angry charlie about- skelton Is he came there to make fun he's now my friend charlie skelton was <laughs> sent down there by the guardian to make fun of the people outside they sent him down there there he's like there's a bunch of loonies there's a bunch of crazies he literally got followed everywhere assaulted by police officers they raided his hotel room wow. they raided my hotel room the police officers acted like the gestapo against any journalist trying to do any real reporting against the bilderberg group and he came out of it shook saying hey I thought these guys were crazy. I came here to make fun of them. These guys are honest. I'm being followed by police <laughs> everywhere I go. And they're literally trying to arrest me for just trying to take a photo of, of David Rockefeller and Henry Kissinger walking down the street together. I got arrested at Bilderberg way too many times, too. Huh. Uh, they said it wasn't real. They said it was a yeah, conspiracy Yeah, it doesn't theory. exist. Uh, and yeah. it's like you could literally just stand there and be like, here it is. They're, yeah. they're, and they'd yeah. be like, sorry, sir, it's a private event. It's the Bilderberg you know, group meeting. And, and then you look in the newspaper and it's like, nope, not a real thing. Yep, doesn't exist. Bye-bye. Crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember there being being like this is absolutely absurd. But but when really rich people do come together, they do really weird stuff. And there's a lot of weird stuff that I, is, that I that I I even experienced at Bilderberg. There's even weirder stuff happening at the Bohemian Grove. And this is some of the stuff we know about. What about the stuff we don't know about? So I th- I thought this this was a perfect time to talk about the bigger elements of these elites who do very sinister things. So that's that was me the the larger conversation of Squid Games. But that's yep. always the, the criticism is always the corrupt elites. I don't, you know, when they talk about like, oh, communism, oh, com- they never actually implement it because it's not possible. You, it's, it's impossible to do. And then when they criticize, when, when the left criticizes capitalism, they're really just angry. There are, they're, they're elites with centralized power, mm. able to do really messed up things and get away with it because of how much power they've accumulated. That's not what capitalism is supposed to represent no. either. And the problem is communism doesn't exist, right? They say that like they, every time they try it, they get some weird form of, you know, genocidal, authoritarianism yeah. capitalism at its root is just people with capital from their work can reinvest that into making more projects however in our current system which mixes it we end up with a lot of corruption and then you get a left saying yeah. aha this proves capitalism doesn't work and it's like no actually the problem is is the corruption yeah i don't, I don't care who's who's doing it or why it's corruption bad when you use yep. the power of government to destroy your competitors in the quote free market that's not a free market that's not the free that's market. that's communism that's government direct intervention into the free market that's preventing the market from being able to express itself from being able to speak for itself because usually in the free market if someone does something good they get promoted they get business they get commerce they get people going to them because they know that their reputation is good when you have multiple multinational billionaire elites playing by a different set of rules, not paying taxes, getting subsidies, literally getting taxpayer funded money, getting bailouts and restrictions and rules that punish their competitors and only help them. That is not a free market. We don't have that. We have multinational corporations, globalists, some people call them, that are literally the ones calling the shots, creating policies that screw you over while they get whatever they want for the grabbing. I got it. I got I got to bring it up again for the 800th time, my friends. You've seen it in almost every segment that I've done over the past few months. Democrats in the civics poll believe the economy is good. <laughs> Republicans and independents think the economy is bad. 70% of independent voters believe the economy is to some degree bad, either fairly or extremely. 88% of Republicans say mm-hmm. either fairly bad or very bad. 54% of Democrats say the economy is very good. We got the story from Breitbart. Consumer sentiment crashes as confidence in Biden economic policy, uh, I'm sorry, uh, collapses. Breitbart says, the University of Michigan's preliminary October rate of consumer sentiment fell to 71.4 from 72.8 in September. Richard Curtin, the survey's chief economist, explained the downturn. Consumer sentiment has remained for the past three months at the lows first recorded in response to the shutdown of the economy. The Delta variant supply shortages, reduced labor force participation rates, will continue to dim the pace of consumer spending into 2022. There's another less tangible factor that has contributed to the slump in optimism. Confidence in government economic policies has significantly declined during the past six months. So there you go, my friends. There are people who are living in a cult. They believe for some reason, I just, I literally don't understand how they, how they think that things are, are, are going well. We are being told by Jen Psaki that well, it, it, it's good that prices are going up because it means that things are being sold. We saw that article that was like, inflation is actually a good thing. It means you'll make more money. No, 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 no. It means you can't buy stuff. It means your saving is, savings are being gutted. This reminds me of Bernie saying that bread lines are a good thing. That means yeah. there's a bunch of bread. Like, no, you're wrong. You're wrong <laughs> about this. People are waiting in line to eat. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, we're in this weird limbo right now where everything is, we're still getting out of, uh, you know, the COVID economy. Uh, I, I'm selling a house right now and the market is still good, but that, I mean, you can see, can th- I buy it? Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, so it's in California. Yeah. yeah it's in well. California, oh, no, you can, but you can keep that. Sorry. Well, so here's, here's a question though is, is, uh, is so right now in rural areas, rural property is absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Like property that used to be a couple hundred grand is now going for like triple. But what about in San Francisco? Is it going down? It hasn't going down yet. It hasn't skyrocketed up. Uh, San Francisco is, it's not the best test because they don't have a lot of uh, inventory. So when a house goes on, it's usually gone and it's it's bought up by a a company usually. Who in their right mind would move to San Francisco right now? I don't know. I don't know. We just had a poll come out recently saying uh, half the people, half of the residents want to leave. Uh, you guys have poop all over your streets. It, it, and that's What's not, the deal? 
That's what not even an over exaggeration. <laughs> it started drifting out into the outer no, streets. It stop. used to be just in the Tenderloin or on Sixth. It's like rolling down but the street. It's, in the li- wind. it's rolling down California Street, going down 101, <laughs> oh, which they just downhill. blocked off because you can't drive on 101 anymore. You can just ride a bike on it oh, or gosh. poop. You can poop on it too if you like. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, Man. it's terrible. It's terrible. I, I've seen things in California I never thought I'd see. Yeah. I was in LA, and I'm. We, we, I was going to a shopping center. And then right in the middle of the street, this large homeless woman just walked right in, spread her legs and squatted and just went to town. And I was like, what is happening right now? This is crazy. Welcome to the city. I remember doing a walk and talk that was unedited. And I was just walking down San Francisco, down where I think City Hall, is that it? Or the state capitol? City Hall. City, where City Hall is. It looks like a state capitol. And I saw a lot of people taking the vaccine uh, uh, on the streets. Self-administered. Uh, vaccine, Self-administered. Huh? Uh, yeah. doing. And I saw a lot of uh, different stuff. But as I was filming, as, as I was walking, there was a lady screaming on the top of her lungs. And I see police officers hear that and literally run the other way. Mm. And I'm like, this is what's happening in one of America's biggest city with some of the highest rents. How, do, how in the world do you live there? Uh, not for long. I'm, yeah, I'm okay, leaving. Good. I'm it's, getting it's, the hell out. I was, it was enough. Are you, are you able to tell us what options you're looking at? Um, like Texas, uh, any place in the country away from a city. Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't want to live in a city at all anymore. I'm Smart done. Smart move. Uh, my house got, uh, you know, I grew up in San Diego, like never had my car broken into. Lived in San Francisco for 18 years, had my car broken into twice a year. Wow. Twice Jeez. a year. And my wife had hers broken into. Uh, it's all uh, the time. There's always, uh, have you considered Chicago? <laughs> uh, no uh, Surprisingly <laughs> enough, no Nice city New York City is yeah. also very charming With, uh, you know, a lot of people trying to uh, stab you Big yeah. rats <laughs> Big, huge rats That would, yeah. they, didn't, they didn't oversell that one I couldn't yeah. believe it when I saw that But no, no cities I'm done with cities yeah, uh, but, Sorry, go ahead No, no I, I just, the, the crime I don't know how the, they can say the economy is good When we have uh, How many We have There's a help wanted sign in California Every, everywhere I yeah. go, every shopping center has at least five. Or if it's, it's not cult, empty, dude, it's a cult. Yeah. If, it, if it's not an empty building, it's a help wanted sign. Yeah. You go to the supermarket out here and there's there's a sticker every on like every other uh, like refrigerator door and on yeah, every aisle multiple everywhere. times saying five hundred dollar sign on bonus. I, and these people are just like, I think the economy is good. Yeah. yeah. I, I try to go to a restaurant earlier today. Uh, the first two all closed when it said it was open. Yo, Waffle House yeah. is closed. Yeah. That, that, that's that, when that, you know that, it's that's the world. Yeah. I've yes. seen a lot of things. I've seen people die before my eyes. But when I saw <laughs> Waffle House closed, my heart felt like it was being just strained. And I was like, <gasps> it's real. It's happening. It's uh, the end of the world. True story. Uh, there is a Starbucks near my house that ran out of coffee because of the <laughs> supply <laughs> line chain. Oh, wow. Man. Ran out of coffee. Woo! Had to close. Yo, oh, I'm just, gosh. I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to, I want to just gloat. When I was saying like, hey, you should get emergency food a year ago because you never know. Like sometimes yep. it rains, there could be a flood, the road might get closed, and you got it. You get have some food and water in the closet. You can pop up when you need it. And all these lefties were like, oh, Tim's so dumb. He's telling people to buy emergency food. And now we're going on like year two of supply chain collapse. Yep. Yep. And, well, you know, go to your store. There's food. I'm not, I'm not saying people are starving right now, but I'll tell you this: the prices for emergency food has like doubled or tripled. Mm-hmm. Some shops don't sell them anymore. So if you got it, you're good. If you don't, oof. Yeah. And Bitcoin's through the roof. Uh, what's it called? Uh, I already made a list here. Bitcoin's up, stocks, bonds, copper, all up. Confidence crashes near decades low. As the Washington Post is literally writing articles that are entitled, America needs higher, longer lasting inflation. Oh I mean, uh, how more criminal could you get? When you look at inflation, it, it predominantly makes people poor. Mm-hmm. Already, the cost of living astronomically high the well, cost of food higher than it ever has been for the average american and everything for the basic cost of living is going up wages staying the same what did they call it was it reuters who called it a great reboot or yeah it? a great yeah mm. a great reboot yeah no yeah. for real yeah i think reuters did right great, yeah i think so the I don't great the reboot word. it's like guys we know what the great reset is <laughs> we know yes. the word <laughs> yo man bitcoin is what like 62k yeah. Imagine how many how many people I remember because uh, we talked about it. I'll, I'll just say this right, right away, like why Bitcoin works. It's decentralized. It is better than all the other cryptos, in my opinion. And when you've got a failing U.S. economy and failing U.S. policy, Bitcoin is global and decentralized. So it's much, much more difficult to actually manipulate. Now, a lot of people say, oh, but Elon Musk tweets and he manipulates it. Nah, you don't you don't get it. We know what the real value of that coin is. And basically right now, that means you're buying at a discount. 
But I remember when it hit 60, and a bunch of people were like, oh, you know, it's a bubble, and then it fell down to 30, and they started saying, like, see, that proves it. And I'm sitting back like, okay, sell your Bitcoin then. And they did, and, and poor people were selling. Now it's back up over 60. It's its, it's, it's its highest point, isn't it? Um, I don't i don't know exactly. I have to double check that to make sure I'm accurate. $61,351 per coin. Not quite the highest. Uh, it looks like it was a... Close. 63 or something. Still. I in mean, April of 2021. Yeah, 63 and April 15th. That's so, geez, but yeah, I... essentially it's, it's where it was. It's, it's at about its highest point again. People need to understand this is a sign not of, this is not good news. Okay. If you are a, if you're a cryptocurrency holder, what this really means is your dollars are becoming worthless. Yeah. yeah. So when we, when we were in, uh, back in November, when we were talking, we had Bill Ottman on the show and he was like, yo, buy Ethereum. And I was like, okay. And so I bought some more Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then within a few months, it was at 30K. And I was like, whoa, lumber went up at the, mm. like basically the same rate. So what I think is actually happening is when Bitcoin skyrockets like this, what, what it really means is not that it's getting more valuable, but the dollar is getting less value. Yeah. Now they're saying, I saw, I saw one report, the dollar will lose half its value in the next like decade or so, next 13 years. And all those Sit on that to. money. Sit yeah. on that money, huh? It has to. I mean, bec- how much did they print over the last two years? Like six oh, trillion, trillions. I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, Four to six trillion. E- even though uh, arguably it's still BS, uh, it, the, the dollar's not based on anything and it's just a big joke at this point. But when you print that much, over the last year, it has to fall. And, and they've been kicking the can down the road for, I mean, longer than I've ever seen in my lifetime. I've seen it, c- economies come and go. Nothing's been like this. Uh, but yeah, anytime he's like, even before the internet, anytime you start seeing some old guy trying to sell you gold, you know the, oh, well, we're about to go into a recession. Uh, and like the same thing is happening here, except the new gold is, is Bitcoin. But, and it might be a, I would recommend it uh, or, or no financial advice. No yeah. financial advice. I don't know anything. I used to own a comic store, but I keep <laughs> a lot of cash in my safe. Um, <laughs> that's where that's what I do because yeah, I'm I'm not really sure. I mean, it, I I don't know how bad it's going to get. It's this is the worst I've ever seen it, and with the since the shoe hasn't dropped yet, uh, and it's going to be. It's only a matter of time, really. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't Yo, know. I think it's going to get worse well, than people realize. Demand, I hope not. Demand is about to spike for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh yeah. And with already constra- like constrained supply lines, that could snap it yeah. totally. Travel already super expensive and you know, we talk about how the vax mandates are, are really bad, but a lot of people aren't talking about how the Biden administration literally wants to pass a 3.5 trillion dollar bill, which one of the provisions is a surveillance bill where the Biden administration will be literally looking at everyone's bank account to make sure that everyone's paying the IRS if they have over $600 in their bank accounts. I mean, this is a massive surveillance bill. This is a massive incursion into people's personal liberties, people's personal freedoms, and they're going to be paying for this bill by taxing everyone over $600 when they print the money out of thin air. Tax the poor. It's insane. Ugh. It's, it's it just seems cruel. It, it's more cruel than than logical, yeah. in my opinion. I completely agree, and nobody's talking about it. Like nobody's right. upset about it. You should be very very upset about this. This, this is this something. This is the bank. The, the the Democrats in their bill and their spending bill want access to the income and outgoing money from your bank account if you have at least six hundred bucks. Yeah. And Nancy Pelosi and Janet Yellen are literally arguing, saying, this is going to get the billionaires, guys. This is going to go after the billionaires. Because billionaires yeah. have accounts with 600 bucks. Yeah. 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 This is going to go after what they've been after the whole time, the middle class. They've always been after the middle class. When you hear tax the rich, it's tax the middle class. You can tax all the rich people you want. Well, it's not going to make a difference. A lot of the multi, uh, you know, billionaire corporations, a lot of these super wealthy people call for more taxes, call for more They're regulation offshore, right? because it will destroy their competitors as, of course, mm-hmm. they save their money in a lot of different safe havens. So like Panama, as they're fine, as what you are, are literally paying every single dime, every single penny, which the IRS knows exactly how much you owe, you make a mistake. They'll send you a bill right away saying, no, 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 no. We know exactly, exactly how much you owe. You, you under, un, understated your taxes. You know, why not just tell people if you're going to be doing that anyway, but, but you're going to have to pay every little last cent of this to go into a hole that literally is going into nowhere. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the multinational corporations get to do whatever they want play by a different set of rules as you're getting screwed 
every single day and your dollar that you worked hard for is being devalued right in front of your eyes yep. inflation is a tax on your savings and holy cow are they taxing the crap out of you but bitcoin is a hedge against that i'm not giving anybody advice but i'll tell you this i'm particularly happy with my purchase of bitcoin over the past several years i i remember when it was at uh like 1300 or whatever this was several years ago and i was thinking to myself like <sighs> Like, dude, I just wish I would have bought when it was a couple hundred bucks. And then I, I was like, I'll just buy some now. I'll just put some of my savings into it. And boy, was that a good idea. And I was, we, Luke and I were talking about this the other day when, you know, I was like, Bitcoin's going to hit a million bucks. And then Luke was like, and then we're going to be thinking back to when it was at 60 and being like, why didn't we buy when it was at 60? <laughs> and yep. that was a joke I made. Like, it, it if you look at the, the trends, some people are projecting 200K in the next month or two. Yep. I think so. I do. I do. I, I don't know. But if you look at the trends, similar trends happening, it should spike. And Max Kaiser also called it. And he's been, he's been within margin of like his predictions quite a bit. I'll just put it this way, man. I don't got advice to anybody other than the U.S. dollar is becoming worthless. Uh, yeah, your twenty dollars. If they raise the minimum wage to like twenty dollars an hour, it'll be worth ten. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, that's the, just what you said. The the, the dollar Here's, is worthless. It's right the, now, it's the you, you know the, the Big Mac index. I think they call it. You ever hear that? Yes. They 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 gauge the strength of economy by the by a working class person's ability to buy a Big Mac, uh -huh. something like that. And so it's like, how many hours do you have to work to purchase a Big Mac? And so they'll look at a bunch of countries, and a lot, for a lot of countries, like you got to work four or five hours to get one Big Mac. That's a bad economy. In the United States, it's like you can work for one hour and actually get two Big Mac. Yeah. So it's a good economy. Right now, if a Big Mac costs five bucks and you're getting 10 bucks an hour, you're getting two Big Macs an hour. But if they increase the minimum, minimum wage, what's really going to happen is that Big Mac's going to go up in cost and you're still going to be getting two Big Macs per mm -hmm. hour. The amount of money you make of is course. not relevant to the cost of the materials and the labor to produce the product. The left doesn't get it. Mm -mm. There is one benefit, though, when it comes to imports. Because raising the wages in the United States won't change imported goods from other countries, which maybe they're trying to do, hoping that, okay, the economy's collapsing. But what if, like, your computer was cheaper because everyone, or not cheaper, but you're making more money, now you can afford to get it. The computers are still going to get expensive, but they're hoping they can, like, outpace the, the imported goods as they outsource more and more of our manufacturing and products overseas. So this just sounds to me like we're giving more of our power to countries overseas. So that's not good, first of all. Second mm -hmm. of all, I'm very glad that you guys' Bitcoin investment are going up. But at the same time, that terrifies me because it lets me know that everything that I'm earning and everything I'm doing, trying to pay off my own debts, it's for nothing. The value no, no, of my no. dollar is falling. No, that's good. Your debt's becoming worthless, too. Yeah, oh, that's great. So it's like that's I was saying. Like, <laughs> so this is what the U.S. does, though. The U.S. purposefully inflates so that the debt they owe is worth less. So if 20 so bucks weird. can buy you two cheeseburgers and you, let's, let's say this, let's say I borrow 20 bucks from you to buy two cheeseburgers. I owe you the equivalent of two meals. I wait until inflation hits and the 20 bucks can only buy one cheeseburger. And then I only got to pay you back one when you gave me two. You see how that yeah. works? Oh, yeah. That's the trick. China is also implementing a very similar policy. <laughs> they've been acting like they have blank checkbooks and they've been writing checks all over Africa, all over Latin America and buying a lot of influence, buying a lot of resources, buying a lot of manufacturing, buying a lot of relationships that slowly and surely are overtaking the United States and their sphere of influence in those particular regions. So it's very interesting to see China implement the same role, but instead of just giving it to multinational corporations, they're using it to build their country to make sure that they have enough natural resources for their people, as they're, of course, more of a nationalistic government. Meanwhile, our government keeps selling us out every single day. Yep. And it gets rooted on uh, by more than half the country every day. And that's the thing we have to fight is that influence and that that apathy or, or either rooting for one team or that apathy. Uh, and we see it, it's all throughout our culture. Uh, and yeah, I worry about the future. Uh, I've got kids. Uh, I'm going to buy a, you know, buying a house soon. I don't like, I have no idea what we're getting into. That's why I just, I think it's a good Land. time to not give up, but like, uh, fortify your future, fortify your future. if you can, uh, by getting out of a city, uh, but not everybody can. Yes. Uh, and the, the one thing I, I learned through through covid was i i never paid attention to like local elections i it's san francisco is a waste of time but um that's something i'm going to pay attention to 
every day now. E- every time, everywhere I move, I'm going to know who the dog catcher is. I'm going to know who uh, everybody who lords over me is. I want to know yes. everything about them. Uh, and that's on. That's where I can make the change. That's. I, I don't know if it's going to work, but I, uh, I, I want to know. I got to show you guys what I think everybody. is one of the funniest stories I've seen in the economic collapse. This is from the Salt Lake Tribune. Shipping container apartments opening delayed by global shortages, developer ah. says. <laughs> okay, okay. This is, this is hilarious. The, the cost of a shipping container is, is skyrocketing. The cost of transporting it is going way up. They tried to make low-income housing out of shipping containers, ah. and now they can't open it. Psych. This is like a fire truck on fire, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the perfect definition of irony. I know. We'll use shipping containers to create large, cheap, you know, low-income housing. And now the shipping containers are spiking, Priceless. so they can't even do that. No, uh, this is the perfect economic collapse story. I saw this. I couldn't. I just wow. I've Look been doing some research looks. on them. They're expensive to transport, which is why they're having why they're not the best thing to do. And they're also you don't know if they're going to be dirty or that they shipped toxic uh, chemicals. There's no insulation. When, once you insulate them in the inside, they become much smaller. They're only like eight and a oh, half yeah. to nine and a half feet high anyway. And, Six and feet. That wide. was in Salt Lake City, where yeah. it gets pretty cold. Look at uh, this. This is crazy. Yeah. Imagine living in that. Have huh. you guys have you guys seen Ready Player One? It's a pod. Yep. Yes. No. It's how they live in the stacks. Yep. That's yep. what it is. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> and, and, the pod. And, and, yeah, they have. They, yep. These are up in San Francisco. They have them oh, functioning. Oh man. Um, look, look, look! I love the idea of getting a shipping container for yourself and like burying it and having a little clubhouse or something. Like a bunker. Yeah. Or doing a tiny house. But this is the stacks. This is what we've been like. This is 1984 when the guy lives in that crappy little cute concrete cubicle. Yep. Welcome to your dystopian nightmare. Jeez. California. You will own nothing and you will be happy. In California, you can only get single-use containers, uh, like one shipment version containers. But everywhere else, apparently, you can have like they can transport, transport, transport animal blood, you know, phosphorus. You don't know what's going to be in it. Yeah. We're going to be breathing in. So I would, at this point, recommend do not or at least go look into it. But at least seems a lot worse than I thought it was. I was just watching Ready Player One the other day. When, and then when I saw this, I was like, oh, man. So, like, all the mobile homes are, like, stacked, mm-hmm. you know? And people live in these really awful conditions. Well, this is what you're going to get. I, like I, I, I got to be honest. The, the, these shipping containers are probably better living than New York bachelor apartments. Huh. Have you seen how bad New York is? Uh, I've been there once, and it was, uh, well, recently. They've got apartments that are, like, it's a closet. Yeah, and oh. there's like there's no bathroom. You got to share a bathroom. One of those. It's the same as San Francisco then. So for a studio in San Francisco was thirty five hundred bucks a <gasps> month to four thousand a month to <sighs> rent. Why? Uh, that, that is a good question, uh, especially after you know before. Coop, how do, how uh, does someone afford to live there? Uh, they they go broke. They eat a lot of freaking cup of soup, making a hundred thousand dollars a year, and pooping <sighs> in the street. I have no idea. Well, they make a lot. There's a lot of money. Floating around that town. There was in 2019. Best economy I've ever seen. Wow. Uh, the Trump economy. Oh, uh, yeah. In my yep. lifetime, I am, the, the amount of money that was going through Calif- uh, San Francisco in particular with the big tech, they're all centered there. Yeah. Patreon's there. Uh, uh, Twitter's there. Uh, Mozilla, in downtown. Think, yeah. And uh, they, they – and, you know, houses are expensive. There's always been money rolling through there. And there's always uh, a million people – this is before prior to COVID, but there was a million people a day that would just travel into San Francisco. So the population doubled uh, on every business day. And I, I, I've never been able to explain it. Like a normal house. I don't know how a, a, a gardener lives in San Francisco and he must have bought his house 30 years ago. Maybe it's like 10 gardeners all sharing one studio. Uh, Maybe. And they all just like sleep in bunk beds. It's like good amenities. Um, Nice weather. You probably know better than I do. Yeah. And then you got the mountains to the north. Uh, in the east, you have like, what's the city? You have those Sausa, or Sausalitos up north. But like then you got like kind of suburban, beautiful farmland to the east. You know, you got the 101, the PCH. So it's, it's, it's located in a nice spot, and the temperature is incredible. If you're down low in the hills, it's cooler. And then you go up, and it gets really warm, like up above yeah. when the sun's hitting you. Yeah, I, I, I've never loved city living, so I've never really gotten my head right why people would want to be that close to people. And I lived there for 18 years. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I know you've lived in cities before. I don't know what attracted people to it originally. It's just it sounds like the worst thing in the world. And, and I always think San Francisco, there is that for if you're in your 20s and 30s, I get it uh, as, as a family guy. I don't. 
uh, that you, you're not taking your kids to, to the tenderloin uh, yeah. in they, San Francisco. <laughs> I moved there in 2016 for a year, paid $3,000 a month for a one bedroom. And uh, they were trying to sell me mushrooms on the street when I would walk yeah. around. That was something interesting. Um, but other than that, I never left the house. My car got broken into the day I went down there to look for apartments. Yeah. So I had my backpack in my back seat, came out, and the window was shattered. It was gone. That was rough. Strong start. It's it was terrible. I think it's an illusion. I think a lot of people. I mean, like, there's parts of it that were beautiful. There was parts of it that were nice, and there were parts of it that were fun. But I think a lot of it is an illusion. People build this up. New York is this fabulous city. San Francisco. Is nah, this New fabulous. York. New York smells like sour milk. Pre-internet. Yeah, it, it does. It's all based on pre-internet living before the yeah. before you could get any everything shipped to you at will. You you could only find like cool jewelry in the in the jewelry district in Manhattan. Now you just order it online. They mm -hmm. make it and send it to you from Japan or wherever Malaysia. China. China, China, China. Well, <laughs> everybody had to say it. Yep, China. Uh, I, I think. Well, and then the mom and pop capitalism, which I love, is dead. Yeah, there. you sold I mean, your. Uh, so you had a comic shop in San yeah. Francisco. Yep. What was the whole process of starting it and then selling it? Oh, it was God. It was great. This was uh, back in 2003 when I bought it. It was, uh, hey, I want, I want to buy your comic store, and the guy said, yeah, and we signed one piece of paper, uh, and that wow. was it. And you can't do that now. Um, and the landlord was cool. I, I got lucky. He was an old guy. He liked me. And he gave me, he said, a thousand bucks a month. And he only raised it 25 bucks in 10 years. Wow. And he felt bad when he did it. You can't do that now. Once the heirs take over, uh, as time went on, the city got more intrusive to the point where uh, they did a point of sale purchase tax through the food and health. I don't even know how they wanted to get into my taxes then that they wanted to. So I just got rid of the point of sale purchase. I'm like, I don't have it anymore. So you can't tax me. And you wow. know, cause I was having to submit it and it was a way for them to look at the, uh, and that's their way to sneaking in and looking at your taxes, the city. So they started doing more and more intrusive stuff like that. No more parking bikes everywhere. You can't, you can't drive anywhere. Uh, public transportation got more, uh, more expensive. Crime went up. Uh, my place got broken into a couple of times. They couldn't get in, but it got broken into. It was like regular. Yeah, when the front windows broken, front doors broken, and it just got worse and worse and worse over time. Well, so it did start out so, nice. So, but you you no longer have this comic shop. No, I sold it. I sold it uh, back in 2013. I'm happy I did. My wife owned a business in San Francisco mm -hmm. for a two bit. Well, she had two salons and it went to one for 15 years. And she did great. She did fine. But she had to deal later on. It was there's a homeless guy sleeping in the in the front door every day. Uh, and, and then you can't just scoop them up and get rid of them. You can't call the cops. They won't come and get them anymore. San Francisco, if it's uh, this was before the they changed the nine hundred dollars. You can go and steal nine hundred dollars with the stuff. And, and they won't prosecute you. Basically. They will not prosecute you. Um, Twenty years before that, if they broke into your car, or they did something that was even short of being violent. You just went online and you filled out a form and they might come. Wow. My friend Kelly Cutler was working with the homeless up there and said that every morning at 4 a.m. They'll bring like uh, a fire truck or some some down the street and ho just fire hose the homeless people and make it so that they get off the street. What? Get off the Are you serious? Yeah. No. I, I mean, I've been yeah, hit exactly. with water cannons before at protests. That's pretty severe. I doubt. I, I, I don't know. I, I let's let's look have up the sources that? to that in San Francisco. You said I haven't yeah. seen that. I mean, you never, have you you've never seen that? No, I've never seen him leave a street. Uh, it would have to be like Obama coming through or something like that. That was back in the day. But they they are a constant force all the time, especially down on six and the Tenderloin, which I brought up. But it's spread out because they gave him cash hmm. for the longest time. The, San Francisco gave him cash. That's how they that's how they're fighting uh, drugs. They give him clean needles. And uh, cash money once and a month. I'm going to get in touch with Kelly and see if I can get her evidence on this because that's where I heard all about this from. And then I'll bring it on the show. Maybe we can talk about it next week. It was when I heard that they, that they would be hosing the homeless because they couldn't get them to move otherwise without getting yeah. violent. I forgot what they uh, what they did when this was a long time ago, but when uh, Obama would go there quite often for a fundraiser. And every time he came in, they just bought him bus tickets. Huh. Wow. It's like that South Park episode. You ever see it? Where all the homeless people come to South Park, so then they get a yes, bus, yep, yep. and they get everybody, all yeah. the homeless people, to go to, to to Venice. That's what they do. Did, didn't didn't I Giuliani think it was do a that concert or something? Or some, something. Yeah. No, no. On South Park, they sing the song. They're like in the city, city of Venice, <laughs> right next to Matt's house. That was a funny line. I love that one because Matt Stone lives. Yep. There. Uh, they, they've been doing that for a long time, giving them bus tickets to get out of here. But they stopped doing it in California because they're like, <laughs> it's great. It's great here. We get cash. We get needles. Why would we want to leave? 
ever. Yeah, I I, I, I worked um, I worked for a homeless shelter in California, and people don't understand what causes it. They just don't get it, and it's and it's and it's really really frustrating when you have these bleeding heart types who are just like, why can't we just take like a house and then put the homeless in it? And they do this thing where you'll see like high level progressive, like famous progressives, be like, there are more empty homes in America than homeless people, and I'm like. Okay, and those are that's a non sequitur. The the reason the homeless people are homeless has nothing to do with an empty house. Mm-hmm. It has everything to do with their with with many of these individuals choosing to be homeless. A lot of I, I hear a lot they're like mental illness is the cause of, of, of homelessness. It is. It, it is a cause, but my experience, the biggest cause that I experienced was people saying, I want to be homeless. Mm-hmm. They they enjoy living outside. They don't have to worry about much. People are giving them food and money. Fresh air. But it's it's not even that. It's like they don't care. They're under a bridge. They don't care. You will not be. You can't. You go to them and say, "Look, there are a lot of homeless people who are definitely in in hard times who want to get out of that, right? Who want to find a place to live." But my experience, most of them were just like, "I don't mind sleeping under a bridge. Why should I get a job? People give me free food all the time, so I go to sleep, wake up, walk around, get free food, go back to my bridge, and go to sleep." How yeah. you how you solve for that? I honestly don't know. Unless you, you can't, right? You can't. I, there's, there's, uh, there's. I mean, you've seen it, but there's three types of homeless people. There is the one who wants to be homeless. There is the mentally ill, and then there's drugs. Uh, drugs is the vast majority, and ever since uh, the opioid crisis, it's doubled, triple, quadrupled. Uh, the amount of deaths in San Francisco uh, eclipsed the amount of. Uh, there, there, there. I would say this: there are the legitimate trope of homelessness that the left thinks. Someone down on their luck, hard times, loses their home. That exists, definitely. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot. A lot of people like that. I've met many people like that. But it was not the majority. It was like one in ten. Yeah. If if, if, And that may be generous, one in ten. Most people that we encountered would say something like, get away from me. I'm not going anywhere near your stupid shelter. I want to be homeless. Yeah. They They wouldn't say it specifically like, I want to be homeless. They would be like, I don't want to have anything to do with your garbage. And if they ever did come in, they'd come in for like clean clothes, a shower, and then leave right away. Yeah, they. Uh, I I don't know the exact story on this, but they during when everything was locked down, they gave uh, they let homeless people in to a hotel or a couple hotels in San Francisco. There was a death in two weeks. There was fires inside. They were caught dealing drugs within wow. a week. It was just a complete s show, uh, and uh, th- they had to continue it because they they couldn't like how bad would that look if they stopped it? But they were right. there was cops there all the time, and the hotel was like. Uh, wishing they hadn't have done it, but they so did. I, I, I would love to find a solution to homelessness, but that means arresting homeless people. The, in, in Northern California, they announced that they would intern homeless people if they were deemed not oh, mentally I fit. Saw that. Yeah, they would take their, their paychecks or any money they had coming in and seize it and then lock them up. That's the only, like, that's the simple solution because I tell you this, when you go up to homeless people and say, here's a house, and they go, no, what do you do? Are you going to drag them into the house and lock them in? Because that's that you're going to have to. Pe- these people don't understand. These leftists are naive. They think everyone assumes the world. Like, they think everyone thinks the way they do. Mm-hmm. They don't realize that people believe different things. They think every conservative is a grifter because how could you possibly believe that, say, Jesus is a son of God or something like that? I, I don't believe it. Therefore, they don't either. And they're lying or they're crazy. It's like, yo, you are not the arbiter of truth and morality. You don't know what you're talking about. This is what makes it so hard to actually solve these problems. The, the arrogant. Exactly. And, and judging the world by their own standards all the time. Uh, you're not going to save everybody. I mean, you know, what, what's that saying that the, the left sees the world for what they want to see out of the world and the right sees it for what it is? I don't know if it's a correct saying. I don't even know if I said that right. But well, you made it up if you did. If yeah, <laughs> there you go. I mean, there's the, the you're not going to save everybody. We need it doesn't mean you don't try. But uh, as far as the homeless problem is, because it's not something you can throw money at. It's like the drug war. Uh, that was ridiculous. It's the same thing. Uh, you're going to have to fight the problem at home and you're not going to. St- there's there's hobos. There's there's a whole right. culture of. People. You know, do you know what hobo means? Do you know I that don't. hobo, I... vagrant, bum, vagabond, all different things. Vagabond's the obvious one. That's like a wander, a wanderer, a traveler. But uh, I learned this hobo is a person who is looking for odd jobs and is just passing through, it means homeward bound. Oh, no. Interesting. So a hobo. I know that. When you'd see the cartoon of the guy with the stick with the thing in it, it's because he's going back. I guess the idea was people would go out looking for work, and then when they failed, they would start heading back, taking odd jobs along the way. So they didn't have any place to live. 
They didn't have a job, but they were looking for some work. Hobo. And then bums, I think, were people who were like around the town not working. Vagrants were usually like unable or unwilling to like, you know, it's like a, typically a negative like a layabout. And then vagabond was just somebody without any direction, just traveling around doing whatever. Interesting, huh? Yeah, I've been, I've been called that a couple times. A va- uh, vagabond. vagabond? Uh, yeah, that one's not really derogatory. That one's just no, like you're I'm a wanderer traveler. traveler. And mm-hmm. again, uh, you can only get hurt if you give uh, power to words. I, I'm seeing another story on Twitter. I don't know if we're ready for a transition, but I'm seeing a pretty wild story that I definitely want to talk about. But we can still continue on the subject if you want. Well, you want to give your final thoughts on the homelessness thing? You didn't really chime in, but then we'll, I'll, I'll pull up whatever on Twitter. A lot of people are like, let Gary speak. So I'm, I'm trying, trying to, you know, give as much. Yeah, uh, Luke. I, I know. Yeah. What are you I, doing? I can't help myself sometimes. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah. Uh, but, but, you know, it, it's such a difficult problem. The government, in my opinion, is exacerbating it. It's making it that much worse. We're Luke's talking homeless. About Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't like that word. I like home free. There home you go. free sounds there a lot better as I'm Luke establishing my uh, you know relations with homesteads all across the United States. Building I'd trade like, routes. I'm getting a lot of emails. People have been like, yo, we have a free Dama stand here in South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida. So so thank you for your emails. I, I love being a vagabond. I love uh, staying in parking lots. Uh, but that's a whole nother story in my trailer. And my uh, RV, I like to act like a diva when I smash through the door. Be like, I just got out of my trailer. But in mm-hmm. reality, <laughs> uh, it's my travel trailer that I live in. But that doesn't matter. But um, again, the government is exacerbating this problem. I, I think a lot of it is lack of economic opportunity. I think a lot of it is mental illness. I think there's also a lot of other elements that we can't even quantify in words. But when you look at mental illness, when you look at lack of economic opportunity, that's everything that the government has been literally pushing for and creating along with big tech social media. So that problem is going to be exacerbated. It's only going to get that much worse. People are poorer. People are unhealthier. People are in a worse mental decline. Uh, and, and that is only getting more exacerbated the, the more government gets involved. So, so Luke, you mentioned that there was a big story on Twitter. I can't help but notice that the number one trend is uh, WWE SmackDown. Is, is that the <laughs> is that story? It? No. <laughs> I, saw, I saw Epstein trending, too, a couple uh, hours ago. That's because Bill Clinton was, uh, in, was the in the hospital. hospital. <laughs> and then Bill Gates' his daughter is having a Well, what's a the wedding. story, huh? Uh, but this is something that kind of hits close to home with me because I'm seeing the Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Organization, the FLCCC, just tweet out, that their PayPal was suddenly shut down along with Facebook uh, restricting their account. And they're a group of medical professionals and doctors that are literally putting out protocols of medicines, of supplements, of of medical studies that have helped a tremendous amount of people. They're very pro-mask. Uh, yeah, they're, they're frontline COVID-19 critical care workers. They're, they're a lot of the doctors, and they just got attacked by multiple uh, social media platforms. And I know a lot of people that they've personally helped. So to, so to see this kind of attack on, on medical professionals, on doctors, on people who are quoting the data, the science, and actually going after the studies, to me is a very big deal, another, and this another is, grave escalation in the censorship. That's it, it, Ryan happening. Long has that sketch we've talked about where – I don't, I don't know. You, you've seen Ryan Long, right, Gary? Yep, yep. He has that sketch where he's like, all the experts agree, and then Danny walks in. He's yes. like, I read the data, and I came <laughs> to a slightly different conclusion, and then he just punches him. Yep. And he's like, <laughs> no, all the experts agree again. And that's that, that, this is how it's been for a long time. I mean, there have been a bunch of studies. Uh, I won't get into the details of, of some of the studies, because I'll just keep it vague, that, that have been pulled down. Scientific reports on, uh, on certain cultural issues that get deleted because they're offensive. You'll end up with, in this instance, uh, I think the CNN story is a really, really good example. Sanjay Gupta sitting down with Joe Rogan, finally being forced to admit Joe Rogan was right. A doctor prescribed his medication. And then what happens? CNN doubles down on the lie. Mm-hmm. To see big tech going after, you know, doctors. Why? I, I'm, I, I, look, man, I don't know what to say. What we've already said 50 billion times, and it just keeps happening. I'm not completely pessimistic because there's been so, like, you know, just because something bad is happening now doesn't mean the world's going to end. Doesn't mean that it's, it's completely over. There have been some games like we were talking about Dave Chappelle getting defended by Netflix. It's a good thing. Netflix still kind of sucks. But I, I just don't know, man. You know, uh, Bill Maher, you know, came out. He said he's not getting the booster. Right. You've got Kyrie Irving coming out saying it's his body, his choice. He's got mm-hmm. one life to live and one body to have. You've got Joe Rogan and his fight with 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 uh, Sanjay Gupta. And you have massive amounts of protests all over the world that we're not oh, we hearing that. about, yeah, including right. one well, developing well, right now in Italy. Well, to be fair, from CNN.com, yes. yeah. thousands protest as Italy's COVID pass becomes mandatory for workers. They say, 
Anyone who is on a payroll in the public or private sector must have a green pass with a QR code as proof of either full vaccination, recent recovery from infection, or a negative test within the previous 48 hours. Employees who go to work without the pass risk a fine of up to 1,500 euros, $1,730, and suspension without pay. Employers could also face fines if they allow staff to work without it. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, it's substantially a, worse than here in the U.S. Exactly. And the way that they implemented this was really sinister because in Italy, talk of like the a COVID you know, vaccine passport, it was first deemed a conspiracy theory. It's crazy. It's not going to happen here. And then they started to implement it with restaurants and indoor dining. Then they started to implement it with travel, trains, buses, planes. Can't get on any of those if you don't have the green pass. And now their latest rule here, this, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't even want to say rule. Their latest decree here by the Italian government is that you can't work in there in the public sector or private sector if you don't have a green pass. If you don't have a QR code that says the government allows you to work. And if you do work, you get a fine of 1,500 euros. Um, and you need a vaccine to be compliant every six months with this, quote, green pass or a test every 48 hours, which is unfeasible. So Gary, what's, you had what's the I, I got a question. Yeah. So what's the option if you say no to all this? Uh, you're going to jail. You're getting fined till the I mean, a thousand five hundred euro fine here's, for going to work and not having a green. Here's pass. The, here's the best part in the United States. If you are fired because you didn't get vaccinated and there was a mandate, it's considered a voluntary resignation. Oh, yeah. wow. Yep. Yeah. Insult and, insult. and in many states like New York, you lose unemployment benefits. So nurses that get kicked to the curb literally have to find another job right away to make sure that they could even uh, pay the bills. So we're in phase two. Italy went through phase three and four. We're seeing a lot of countries implement the same policies only on different timelines, but they're doing the same thing. It's uh, common. It, it's yeah. Again, it, it, it's already here. Uh, Los Angeles has some of the most strictest uh, COVID-19 vaccine passports that they're going to be implementing. CNN has been cheerleading it, saying it's awesome, it's great. You know, getting permission slips from the government for every basic activity is so awesome. You know, the same government that runs the DMV. Yeah, I definitely trust those people to have a domestic permission slip passport system. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It, it's it's insane. And, and people are standing up to this. People are protesting in mass. I've been tweeting out photos that show huge amounts of people. There's also some fake photos. There's some disinformation going around, but I'm trying to uh, confirm a lot of this. I have some people in Italy that I'm talking to, but now unions, dock workers are coming together and they're doing a, quote, indefinite blockade of the ports in Italy with them saying, we're going to block this until you get rid of this domestic passport permission slip system. So it's going to be a very interesting showdown and clash that we're going to see unfold in Italy in just a few moments from now. It needs to happen soon because, as you guys know, that once they implement this stuff, it doesn't get unimplemented. Yeah. It's done. It's expanded. Like, There's no deadline. Done. There's no deadline. They're yeah. not going to say, hey, if everyone is free of COVID, we're going to get rid of this. Or if 90% or 80%. They usually do this. You, you can't tell someone to sacrifice for something that has no end to it. Mm. That's why we're setting up free Domestan. Uh, th there needs to be a free Dama stand in every state. Uh, and you're setting this up uh, West Virginia? Yeah. Is that? Oh, that's brilliant. Is there it's other not free like it's going to be an actual big city or anything, but we're going to have a lot of space. So there's going to be a lot of a big communal aspects to it where people can come and, you know, we're, 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 we're sorting it out. We're going to be growing our own food. We're going to be doing a lot of sustainable living stuff. Ian's going to build his free dome, geodesic dome. We're going we're gonna to try and do things in the most uh, environmentally friendly and economically friendly way to be like self-sufficient because look, man, they, they, it's the great race that it's coming, right? They want you to own nothing and be happy. Well, as long as you have some land and the ability to produce some of your own stuff, then you'll at least own some stuff. And if the supply chains are breaking down, what I'm really interested in is, you know, what can we make in Freedomistan? What can we, what, what can we get out of the ground? What can we build ourselves? Luke's talking about trade routes and stuff. Can we get metals and things like that and then start doing construction or even like sourcing raw materials things like that ian's talking about pulling carbon from the air to make graphene maybe yeah. this sparks the graphene revolution because we can't get iron anymore Who right knows? you can pull the carbon dioxide out of the air then deposit it onto like a copper palladium alloy at like a thousand degrees centigrade and it'll deposit graphene oxide um, that's one way to do it there's other methods too you can take rubber trash and then hit it called flash graphene where you hit it with pulse it with lasers and then turn it into a a fine layer of graphene that requires a lot of electricity and lasers. We need and to figure out how to generate that. a lot of electricity. Yeah. 
like locally, like geothermal or something. Giant hamster yeah, wheel. Nuclear. Ian runs in it. Little yeah. mini <laughs> nuclear plant. Yeah. Uh, it sounds much better than the Chad, for sure. It does. <laughs> it's, uh, it's solutions. Not, if we just yeah. stare at the problem like this all day, every day, we're all going to go insane and then it's going to end. Well, so well, we have yeah. to fix it. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's funny. They, they set up the autonomous zone in these cities just by trying to steal land or whatever. They're colonizing. Yeah. What do it, we do? We, we, we rightfully negotiate a treaty for you know, settlement on this here land and then set up our autonomous zone. It's not an autonomous zone. You know, we're, we're just like a normal place with like business. No, it's, it sounds like it's weird. We were talking earlier about things flipping. We we're seeing people on the right. I don't know. I want to say too conservative, like thinking about communes and going on their own, which is, it's good. You know, there's always been the preppers as well, uh, to be fair. And I, you know, we have to do this soon. We have to think about these things soon. So one thing when I talk about it on my channel, I've been talking about it for a long time is, you know, nobody's going to come and save us. Like nobody's coming in. Trump ain't going to sweep in and fix everything. Mm -hmm. Even if he wins in two years, the midterm elections might be a slap on the wrist, but it, you know, right now they're all in on this. Most of the government is in on this. They're just playing their stupid game and they're resetting on us. And there's like, there's stuff I'd love to say, but I, I didn't want to say it, you know, on, on your channel, you know, when we were talking about earlier and I won't say it here, but, uh, you know, until we decide we are going to end this, those rules, like I said, are implemented. They're implemented. They're not going away ever. And now, now this word mandate is just part of our language now and we're completely cool with it. So we went from emergency, emergency provisions mandating that people stay at home for a couple of weeks to Gavin Newsom mandating what a business can sell on a, to you know, a toy aisle, you know, and that's or why we chose West Virginia. You know, you could choose New Hampshire, Florida, Texas. I think Texas is too dense and that means it's susceptible to, you know, leftist manipulations and things like that for a variety of reasons. What happens, we see this in West Virginia where there will be like a gun range, a shooting range, and it's noisy. Uh, there actually is one up, you know, not too far from here. It's a public land where people go shooting. You're not supposed to do it as, use it as a range, apparently, but people do hunting training or something. Uh, all the neighbors can hear the gunshots all day, every day, and they're fine with it. But liberals are starting to move in from D.C. because they want to get away from the nightmare they created and go to West Virginia where it's conservative. When they move in, they're told, when you buy this property, you sign this disclosure acknowledging there's a shooting range, you know, on the other side of the street, which presents some dangers, risks, and a noise issue. But you accept these things when you move in. And they say, yeah, no problem. Then they tell their friends to move in and say, once we get enough people, we can vote to shut down their range. Huh. And that's what's been happening. Things like that. There was like a farm that had like a dairy farm and it was stinky. And so people moved in and they were like, you acknowledge there's a farm here. The smell is, you know, something that people are concerned about. They said, no problem. Once they sold all the land around it, the people voted and said, shut the farm down. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you own this land and they're like, sorry, the cops come in and say the people have spoken and then you can't run your business anymore. That's what you got to watch out for. That's why I'm worried about, you know, Texas, because it's happening in West Virginia, too. Now, that's because West Virginia, people don't know this, is about an hour from D.C. It's not that far away from D.C. So New Hampshire might be a good idea, but then New Hampshire is, uh, I think New Hampshire, what it has going for is a free state project, which is protecting it and expanding the freedom. West Virginia has the inverse problem. They have a lot of people trying to come into the eastern part. That being said, though, West Virginia has lost a ton of liberals from the other more uh, urban cities. So I think West Virginia is a good bet. New Hampshire is probably, I think, in the long term, we're actually looking at uh, setting up shop in some capacity in New Hampshire. So uh, maybe buying a small piece of land. That way we have a place to be in New Hampshire in the event the Free State Project becomes very prominent. <coughs> because as long as I've been, I've been ta telling Luke nonstop, like New Hampshire is <coughs> How a great place. Blasphemy. <laughs> That's a blasphemy. I've been screaming about New Hampshire forever. I've been sending you property there a few he weeks sends, ago. Luke sends me Zillow like, posts. I'm like, dude, this is good right here. Because there's already a freedom stand there. There's a great guy called Jay Noon. He could fix and build everything. He's been teaching me pretty much doing man camp, which he does. And he helps people figure out how to get out of the cities and learn to actually be self-reliant. He's a great guy, Jay Noon, if you haven't heard of him. Great, awesome part of the Free State Project. But he, he has his own freedom, uh, free domestan um, in New Hampshire. Want, I want to build a forge. Yeah, and uh, you know, you, you, there's a lot of freedom in New Hampshire, um, and a lot of opportunity. So I love it there. I go there for the summers, Florida for the cold, cold winters, and of course Tex out here with you guys uh, for the foreseeable future. Texas is doing all right. Yeah, 
It's yeah, really dense so though. Far. And you got that border problem, right? These people flooding in through the border is a big risk to Texas in terms of maintaining, you know, their sovereignty. California. Yeah. No, it's it uh, California was fine 20 years ago. Mm. California was fine like when I was growing up thinking about like San Diego was a, a right-wing military town and uh, Los Angeles was pretty centrist. Uh, San Francisco was always weird, but it never ran the state. Now it runs the state, and now we've seen what happened, like Nevada, Las Vegas. You know, uh, they they had these like crazy mask mandates, and I was just like, God, the, the, you know, gangsters used to run this town. I was just there. And I'm like, it's oh, it's it's so conforming, and it was kind of a turnoff. And then Arizona's the same way. So I yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Texas flips, if if Florida flips. It just depends on what county you're in They're at this close. point. So Texas yeah. and Florida are like teetering between left yeah. and right. Now, there's been some big changes. Like on the border, it went Republican. Miami went Republican. West Virginia is the second most Trump-supporting state in the country. And so I'm like, I like it. You know, New Hampshire is good. But I think in order to get a good space, you got to be like, you, you got to be kind of far away from the urban center. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, we're, we, we get West Virginia. We're in the tri-state area, but we, we, we were setting up for Domestown in West Virginia, and it's like an hour and a half to the airport. So you still get a big urban center airport, not too far away, but not too close. We, we weighed a lot of options. I mean, I was looking at northern Maine. I was like, I'll take what I can get, but satellite internet ain't gonna, ain't, it's not going to cut it, and bringing mm -hmm. people out to the middle of nowhere is too difficult. We looked at rural Pennsylvania. That would have been awesome. I really wanted to like find like a dying town and bring industry back and just like get more jobs and stuff. But uh, maybe maybe we'll do that with the Ferdamistan area and more people will find jobs and more industry will grow and we'll, we'll be investing continually in the space to build stuff and set up a business. Lo, you know, Luke wants to get his own, ha, ha, have his own gun shop, so. That would be fun. And, yeah. and uh, a training facility and, yeah. you know, growing CQC. our own food. Hell yeah. Yeah. Owning a shop was brilliant. It was the most freedom I've ever had, well, except, you know, working for, on a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's great. Being your own boss is absolutely, it, it's, that's the American dream, you know, and you don't need to be rich. Uh, I never made a ton of money at the comic store. I was so freaking happy for most of it. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm happy now, except for the world falling apart right. around us. Uh, I'm happy. It's, it's hard to, to work out in my head sometimes. But, yeah, the, the, I guess the only problem I had about moving out of California was finding Internet. I mean, that, that's, that was, you know, like you said, satellite Internet's not going to cut it. So I'm going to have to have it put in myself. Yeah, that's what uh, we especially, did here. Yeah, the, yeah, like you have, you know, if you go too far out, there's no way you're going to get it. Uh, that's the only problem because I would love to be out in the middle of nowhere, nowhere near a city, with not even within 100 miles. Yep. But that's not an option uh, right now. Uh, there's still a ton of country. I mean, Texas is cheap. That's even now, like compared to compared to California, everything's cheap. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Uh, crazy prices, man. But how about we do this? Super chats. If you haven't already, yes. smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, become members at timcast.com to help support our work. And we are having an event coming up uh, October 23rd. Tickets sold out basically instantly. However, for we, we so the initial plan was we were going to give a day's advance notice to members who gave twenty five dollars or more. We're keeping it locked at that level because $25 members are still struggling to get access because of like the high demand. But some people are canceling periodically and tickets are opening up. So the best I can say is I apologize for the kind of chaotic nature of this. We are going to be opening up an auction to members so that we'll have five auction slots where you can you know choose how much you want to pay. And then th this was our compromise. Like we can have people who don't have time to like try and be there clicking the button every every few minutes. But we can also, you know, some, the people who have time to dedicate can get the ticket for free. Other people can just support us by doing the auction system, and then we'll get people to come and help support the event and everything like that. But people are canceling sometimes. And I did see a super chat from one person who said they needed a ticket for their girlfriend. She was able to get one, so I'm glad to hear it. And if you send in emails, we will respond. We, um, we might be able to accommodate some people who got, you know, the short end of the stick due to how the system was operating. So we're going to try and make sure we can do it to the best of our abilities, helping people out. I gave out some tickets to my audiences, literally minutes gone. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> this is crazy. Yep. So, uh, yeah. People want to wow. come hang out. Uh, mm -hmm. We got to expand this, grow this, build this. Oh, man. You know, I we, we could do a stadium like a like a yeah. nice, like a stadium, but like a big auditorium. But then yeah. it's just more like a, than a it's big not the same thing. You yeah. Know? yeah. The, the, what we're planning on doing is it's not a, it's not a, a bar. It's it's open to all ages. I think you have to be eighteen. I don't know, but uh, so it's not all ages, but it's like eighteen and over. 
and uh, we're going to have a, a stage, and there's going to be some comedy from Ryan Long, so it'll be fun. All right, no, let's let's great. read some of these super chats. Smash that like button if you haven't already. Joshua Hickey says, "Anyone else see Peter Thiel donating to people running against the likes of Liz Cheney and other swamp creatures? Said he wants Trumpism to continue for generations in the same ilk of DeSantis. Interesting. Mm. All right, Chef as does it. Tim Pool and Nerd Roddick, the ultimate team up. There you go. Nice." Dan Vasque says, George, what's that about? Uh, that is an inside joke for my show. <laughs> Too long. Sorry. Uh, but Dan Vasque is great. Dan Vasque, uh, you, you guys might have seen him. He, uh, he does cover songs, and he sang uh, Toss a Corn to Your Witcher. Got a couple million views. Got more oh, more nice. than that. Yeah. He's got some. He's, he did the theme song for our show. But, uh, yeah, the George thing. Uh, George is out there. He'll know. Very cool. Right yeah, on. Inside joke. All right. Captain says, Tim, you were right about the ports. The trucker problem isn't truckers, it's trucks. CA carb emission law doesn't allow any semi-truck over three years old to operate at the ports. Look up, opening the port of Los Angeles 24-7 isn't the game changer Biden claims. Interesting. Hmm. Punk Rock Fox says, Tim, we did it. Yesterday I was upset because I could not get my girlfriend a ticket. Guess what? We got it today. Woo. See you in West Virginia. Yes. I'll have my hope mohawk up for you, buddy. Let's go, Brandon. Also, awesome. hi, Ian. We're all, we're all going to be there. Yep. I'll look for it's Mohawk. Be fun. Let's go, Brandon. And Mohawk I'm really Brandon. excited to see uh, Ryan Long play, uh, uh, perform. We haven't really like worked on any schedule for playing music, but I think Ian's going to be playing, right? Sure. Ian's going to play uh, play a set and rock out, and everyone's going to be super stoked. Maybe, yeah, we got to do a couple songs together. I've got two yeah. that I've been working on. I'm, I'm practicing them. In the, the I, I wonder if I can do like one or two songs. So I'm like, this is going to be this is going to be a lot of work. Events like this, it. people need to understand it's tough. You know. Oh, yeah. I, ju I just did like a tiny event. It was very, very tiny compared to this. And it was a ton of work, but it was fun uh, meeting everybody. It makes it more real. Let's yeah. do an acoustic real. thing. Yeah, Keep I'm thinking acoustic. just acoustic. But Ryan Long's a good drummer. Yeah, he is. Oh, Maybe there you we'll go. Get him out here Got a whole band. Drum. Interesting. We can That's bring right. the digital kit. Yeah. Nathan O'Connell says, the last time Netflix tried the woke stuff with cuties, they lost $7 billion in value because everyone canceled their subscription. They aren't siding with the woke anymore. And they're not losing value over Chappelle. I don't think their no. stock's going to go down over that. They're going to be like, people like it, you know? Chappelle's insanely I popular. I didn't I know mean, he had a special yeah. until the drama. Oh, yeah. They, they're terrible at, at promoting their specials, but, I mean, she, they don't need to. With Chappelle, would get around, and within two weeks, everybody had seen it. And it's, if yep. it wasn't for Squid Game, people would, uh, it would be the most watched thing on there. So. And Blazin64 says, Gary and Tim need, uh, need you to discuss Falcon and the Winter Soldier series. <laughs> we did. We were talking about that before yeah. the show well, started. Before yeah. the show, but not on the show. Yeah. Sorry. My general assessment was that it was not overly woke. It tried to be political, but kind of just didn't really get a strong message. But I liked how U.S. agent was the media claimed that he was the embodiment of white supremacy and white male rage. But it turns out to be a redemption arc hero that is like made to look good. So... Take that media. Yeah, I, I totally, the writing was all over the place uh, and US agent uh, Cap was much better than, uh, he was the best character in it. I thought he had the best character arc, uh, but I thought it was uh, filled with, uh, I, I get into the weeds on this stuff, but intersectional feminism, I call it the MCU. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it, yeah, they, they, it's a long story, but it goes back to Captain Marvel and you know, Awful at the movie. end, yeah, terrible movie, terrible movie. But at the end, they had Falcon. Falcon didn't even fight his own bad guy. Oh, I call her Freckle Jesus, but she came up and uh, she got killed. Uh, she got killed by by Carter, by Sharon Carter. So why are you not even fighting your own bad guy at the end? And people say, oh, you're just nitpicking and stuff. But no, if you mm -hmm. watch the entire story, Falcon does. He deifies his villain, who is basically the head of Antifa. She's like a you know, and, and he's like chewing out, uh, doing this, uh, you know, he's projecting right in front of three, uh, three politicians that just happened to be standing there that survived a plane crash. And, and, <laughs> and his big suggestion or helicopter crashes do better at the end. That's what it is. You know why I didn't like uh, Captain Marvel? And I thought a lot about this. I watched a video comparing Captain America to the film to the Captain Marvel film. And they're like, in Captain America, you have Steve Rogers. He's weak. He has no strength. But he has, inner, he has good moral character. He's willing to stand up for those and stand up for himself, even though he knows he'll lose. Here's a scene where he throws himself on top of a grenade, proving that even though he isn't, uh, you know, a strong physically, that he's, he's a good person who's willing to do what he has to do. He's then granted power and, be, and, and then his, his, he has the strength to back up his ideals. Captain Marvel was always strong. 
And her powers were locked away by a man. Mm -hmm. So in the Captain Marvel story, she's mean. She's nasty. And in the end, she doesn't have a redemption arc. She has a self-realization. Huh. I actually found her to be the villain. I found her to be very villainous. Not that the militaristic, you know, uh, group that she was working with was good guys. No one has to be the good guy. But her whole arc is basically she's a bad person. She's a bad person. She's a bad person. Now she's strong and a bad person and arrogant. And I was like, ugh. And then in Endgame, when I was in the theater and she punched Thanos, the whole audience, the whole theater groaned. No, no joke. So there's that theme. It's like there's that scene where Thanos has the Infinity Gauntlet. He has everything. And then, or yeah, he has almost everything. No, no, no. He does have them all, right? He has and, almost everything. And when she going, comes down. Yeah. And then, he, and, then he, and then he's like pushing against her. And then she, she's holding his, like he headbutts her and she doesn't flinch. And then everyone groaned. Oh. Yeah. And then she grabs the, or no, he grabs the stone and punches her. People were like. I was I was laughing. People when I heard cheered when that happened in my theater. They so, cheered when yeah. she did it. They did when she got punched by Thanos. In, they were like, "Yes!" I was in rural <laughs> Maryland when I saw Endgame, and so it must have been this a, a, a conservative area because I was like, it, I was in a particularly conservative yeah, area. When Western I, Maryland, very everyone groaned. Yeah. I was laughing when I heard it. Oh. Like, oh, and I was uh, like, and then when all the women came down in that scene, the audience groaned again, and I was laughing. Yeah. I was like, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, that I'll so. point out again, Disney annihilated that series, The Infinity Gauntlet. They, they should have made The Infinity Gauntlet and made it like they wrote it because it's amazing, and people die, and it's horrible to see your your favorite hero get ripped apart by the Infinity Gems. It's just, that's what they needed more of, not these invincible trash characters. I liked, uh, did, did you watch What If? Uh, yes, I did. I thought it was kind of dejected. Like, it's clear people recorded their lines in passing. Yeah. It's like, as part of your contract, you're going to do this movie, and then just read this line real quick into this microphone. Okay, thank you. And During they, a lunch hour. Right, exactly. But I really did like this, the finale. I, I, I liked, like, you know, the watcher breaking his up. Oh, spoilers, sorry. <laughs> but I liked it. I didn't think it was that great, but I, I was entertained by it. I watched it. My favorite, um, I, I'll tell you this, the Doctor Strange one was wrong, and I fixed it. Did you hear my rant on the Doctor Strange No, I episode? didn't. What happened? So you've seen it, right? Yeah. Spoiler alert. I, you, everybody should have seen it by now. So Doctor Strange in this universe is, he's bringing, um, what's Janine? That's her name, right? No, what's, uh, what's the woman's name? I'm blanking. I went, oh, my God. This is bad for me, too. Janine, Shared that doesn't sound right. No, yeah. it's not. I don't know. If, I don't know. Janine, name. why did Sorry. I say Janine? I'm not a nerd. I, What's I'm, the name of, of the doctor? Palmer? Dr. Palmer. What's her first name? It's Rachel McAdams. I know the yeah. actress's name. <laughs> so anyway, I we'll, can't call, think her, of the we'll call her Dr. Name. Palmer. Christine. Yeah. Christine. Christine. Why did yes. I think Janine? Weird. Yeah. Anyway. Is the in okay, so anyway, in, his, uh, in this universe, well, I'm going to start over. In the original <laughs> movie, he's an arrogant prick. He, he invites her out. She says, I'm not going to something like that. He's trying to pass somebody in a storm, crashes, his hands get crushed. He can no longer be a doctor, so he starts losing his mind because he's like, his whole life is destroyed. Eventually, he finds the mystic arts and becomes a sorcerer supreme, and that loss drove him to becoming the hero that's helping save the planet. In the What If series, they're like, in this version of reality, he brings Christine with him. She dies. Mm -hmm. And in trying to fig like learn about life and loss, finds the mystic arts, becomes sorcerer supreme but eventually decides to use the time stone to go back in time to save Christine, but he can't because it's a fixed point in time that created him. If she doesn't die, he never becomes Sorcerer Supreme. You know what I thought was going to happen? What I thought was going to happen was that when he's like, you know, desperately trying to like bring her back to life and the Watcher talks to him and says, you can't change a fixed point in time. It is the loss of Christine that drives you to become the Sorcerer, Sorcerer Supreme. I thought he was going to go back in time and destroy his own hands on purpose, creating the timeline where he destroyed, where his life was destroyed. And then what that does is it kind of sets in motion this loop into the original movie where you realize he didn't have to be crippled. That mm -hmm. in the original timeline, he just lost Christine. But even though they didn't stay together, he was willing to sacrifice everything that made him who he was in order to allow her to live. And they didn't do it. Nope. And it was kind of like, eh, whatever. And then there's like a weird thing where the source, where the ancient one like turns him into two Stevens or whatever. And I was like, yeah, yep. whatever, man. And then it ends the same way anyway. Right. My I, way was better. Yeah. That would have been awesome. I think so. I, th <laughs> I mean, I think they just wanted it to be a sad ending. I think that's pretty much it. And plus they stole something from Doctor Who having the fixed point in time. That's straight up a Doctor Who thing. I just, so. I got to stress like how amazing it would have been if he's like to see the scene where he's like trying to save Christine and the universe is collapsing and the Watcher's like, it can't be done. 
because the law strives you to become the Sorcerer Supreme. And then he's like, what if I gave up something else? And then it was like, it would have to be something of tremendous value. It's like, what if it was everything that made me who I am? His hands. And then he creates their own timeline. So he basically punishes himself. How awesome would that have been? That would have been cool. Yeah. Anyway. I'm totally lost. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> it's okay. okay. we got to take advantage of that. I don't follow. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Cole uh, Stiverson says, Tim, please talk about the globalists. There you go. That's what Luke is here for. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Dennis S. says, Dems have media. Media runs on trades. Trades have mostly conservative Republicans, etc. Love you guys. Listen every day. Let's go, Brandon. Let's, Let's go, go, Brandon. Brandon. Absolutely. All right. J.H. Schwalbach says, with all the money I give in Super Chats to Gary and Tim, my wife is sure I'm buying porn. <laughs> Keeps marriage spicy. <laughs> Hail Friday Night. Is it Friday Night Tights, right? Yep. AZ, X-Ray Girl, Geeks and Gamers, RK Outpost, and all thanks uh, to Tim for having Nerdrotic Moist. Too spicy. Oh, no problem. Nice. We're, we're more than happy to have you on. Thank you. And, and it's porn in a way. Intellectual porn, maybe. <laughs> Better yeah. than that. I hope. All right. Toxic Man Flu says, Gary has an awesome story of hope and success. I never would have made it through the last two years without Gary, Comics Division, Culture Casino, and many others in the fellowship. Thank you all. Right on. I like how they're using the word fellowship. I tell people to stop using the word community. <laughs> the fellowship. Stop fellowship. that commie language. Yeah. The fellowship of the ring. Yes. We got so many super chats. Ooh, this is from guys. Sarah Stathatos. She says, George... Exclamation point, exclamation point. I, I'm not going to read all of them. So many She says, George, points. George, George. George is going to love that. That George. is brilliant. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch of Super Jets saying the same thing. Yes. George uh, is a supporter of my channel, has been for a long time. And uh, every time he would give a big Super Chat, we'd just yell his name. And it became a thing afterwards. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Samuel Bonin says, Vax mandate, taking my job soon. But fear not, although most of my time is taken up by OT, I've accumulated over 20 projects, books and games that I can start building culture with. Cool. Wish me luck Very or cool. hire me. Um, you can luck. always send an email to pitches at timcast.com. But I do have to be uh, to, uh, to admit we are just like dramatically swamped. We get a lot. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Furious Phil says... JC, Tim, you have Nerd Roddick, a.k.a. Gary. Start asking him questions. Let's go. Unicorns do not crap ice cream and fart rainbows. They don't? Oh. I thought they did. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Vexcoon Kilrog says, Hail Gary. Hope you're enjoying Babylon 5 before the CW re reboot come for it, too. Is that, uh, is that true? Yes. And they're, oh, <laughs> Straczynski's writing it, too. So it's they got the original creator, and uh, it's still probably going to be... Oh, I know a lot of people have hope, but no, you can't, you can't go back home again. And even if the original creator comes back, they're going to capitulate to, oh, you know, yeah. especially it's on the CW. Did you like Picard? No, I, oh, I hated Picard. Really? As I hated it with a passion. I couldn't stand it. Really? Why? Uh, it was the Federation apology tour and oh, they yeah. uh, emasculated Picard throughout the entire series. It became a, about the girl who's the key to everything. Uh, plus uh, uh, Patrick Stewart just looked tired. Yeah. Uh, he was like talking like this to the I mean, whole how thing. How old is he? He's 80 or what? You know? uh, he's pushing 80. I think yeah. he's going to be 79. And they shot two series back to back. And they have him like running upstairs and freaking sword fighting. And it, it yeah. was ridiculous. It no, was absurd. It was, a uh, it was just another deconstruction of a, of a traditional character, which they have been doing over and over again. I liked it. Um, I, 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 it wasn't the next generation. It was just kind of like, uh, you know, going to old reunion of friends. And seeing Riker and, and Deanna and Picard. And I was like, eh, you know, oh, look, there they are again. I would love to see a continuation after Deep Space Nine. And they haven't given us anything meaningful. It's just been reboot and prequel. And I'm just like, so what happens? You know? Well, they'll probably eventually get around to it. They've got like four other shows or three other shows coming out, supposedly. I guess I was, the one reason I liked Picard is finally I'm like, they're showing us something after Deep Space Nine. Because that really bummed me out that we get the Dominion War. And then it's like, let's go back in time and talk about stuff. Like, no, no, no. What happened? This was big. The Cardassians. Come on. That, the, there are four lights. Oh, come on. But no, then they come back and we don't see anybody we really recognize until later in the show. That was an afterthought, by the way. They didn't originally want to do that. Really? Like and have have like a, um, like Riker and everything? Yeah, that was an afterthought. They actually shot a different ending and they CG. I, at the very end, I won't ruin the end. Well. It's terrible. Oh, you can run it. It's a couple it's years now. It's freaking terrible. And I, st I still owe people a review on it. And, uh, I, I think it's The Last Jedi of Star Trek. I think it's the worst. <laughs> wow. Thing wow. I didn't think I've it was that bad. Seen. Oh. 
I, w- I reviewed every episode. I was like, I felt like I was having an aneurysm by the end of each episode. Oh, the Last Jedi was is the worst piece of media. But you have you heard my theory on this? That no. R- Ryan Johnson sabotaged Star Wars on purpose because our culture is stagnant. Have you seen Knives Out? Yes, Did I've you seen like Knives it? Out. No, I hated it. Really? Out. Yeah. I liked it. I, I liked it. it a lot. I thought it was great. People uh, love it, though. So I I'll give them that. I did think it was a little preachy. But I thought he did politics well because he has that scene where the liberal, the leftist woman is arguing with the MAGA uncle. And I think it was decently an accurate portrayal of, of common opinions. The guy wasn't a racist Nazi. The woman w- was like your typical liberal. And they had like made real statements about it, which was funny. And then you had the, 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 the young liberal daughter who mm-hmm. turns out to be a cutthroat who's going to sell out the girl or whatever. I thought it was good. When I saw that, Looper was good, but weird. And the story kind of didn't make sense. But I was like, it was fun. And then when I saw The Last Jedi, I was like, there's no way this was, this was a, a, an accident. He even says, Kylo Ren says, let the past die. Kill it if you have mm-hmm. to. And I was like, he did it on purpose. Because he was probably like, yo, all we do is reboot, remake, same thing over and over again. And he sabotaged. That's my opinion. I, I, that's my bet. Uh, you would have to sabotage to be that bad. You exactly. would have to try yeah. to suck that much. And I would say like that's the same about when, Star when, Trek. When the plasma ar- plasma is arcing in outer space. I'm like, dude, he was sitting there thinking like, what can I do to make this as offensive and awful as possible? I want it. To, I want diehard fans to reject it. So when you see them firing the plasma, it's arcing in space. I'm like, he did that to piss off the diehard people who are going to be like, what? How? How? Or using hyperspace as a weapon. I mean, right. like they never did, did that before, which changes the entire lore, which people care about. Like, that's the thing is people actually, Ryan, I call him Rian Johnson. Rian Johnson doesn't care about star wars and he made that pretty clear he was happy with ha- you know he's an arty he's an artsy filmmaker he likes to piss off half of his audience because he's cool this is star wars just make people happy but yes they did go in there and deliberately deconstruct luke uh yes. the symbolism of him drinking uh blue you know milk. the blue milk out of a giant uh, puppet throwing the lightsaber away puppet boob throwing the lightsaber away you know looking like the big lebowski uh, you know, like complaining all the time, getting his butt kicked by Ray for no reason whatsoever, not really training him. And then, you know, he ODs on the force. That's just like, <laughs> I hate Star Wars and I'm going to do a movie now. It's ridiculous. Yeah, dude. Star Wars is done. Yeah, it's, it's done. Um, some of the games, I guess, what's what's the, the game they just did recently? People liked. But I don't, I don't even Knights know of the Old Republic? Yeah. No, no. Uh, that, the OG Knights of the Old Republic was yeah, amazing. And they, and they have a writer coming in to screw that. Do you need that? I mean, you, you just said it's amazing. And I'm not the biggest gamer in the world, but you said it's amazing. OG Does it need Coder, to be changed? Bro. It was such. It was one of the best games I've ever played in my life. Yeah. I was addicted. It was so good. So and good. They brought in a writer who, uh, who, who... One of the writers who likes to drink fake geek tears. One of those ty- type, of people, type of people who just hate the fandom. Uh, that's part of the thing. I, I kind of put it, I kind of, I defend the fandom once in a while. They, they get picked on a lot by creatives and stuff always have, you know, but it's always been behind the scenes. But now since uh, social media is around, they love saying things like toxic fandom or incels and all yep. the, or you live in your mom's basement. It's like, I thought you were supposed to be for the nerds I'll about just, the nerds. I'll just put it this way. Uh, you know, I think. We, we share a lot of opinions with a lot of people who are upset about the destruction of this content. And uh, what the room we're in is anything but a mom's basement. Mm-hmm. We are uh, um, well, well-mannered and developed adult individuals who enjoy entertainment of the sci-fi and fantasy nature. And it's being ruined by people who don't care about it, who have been handed the reins by big corporations. And I think that their goal is they take a look at their market share and they're like, we got too many dudes. How can we get more women involved? And they're like, what do women like? And then they just make some mashup garbage. It doesn't work. Mm hmm. Well, they, they bought I mean, they bought Star Wars to bring more boys to Disney. That was the whole point of doing it. it was and then weird. they nuked it. Uh, yeah. The, the sequels were just the worst garbage I've ever seen in my life. First of all, The Force Awakens is a shot for shot remake of A New Hope. Yes. And then you get The Last Jedi, which is the worst film I've ever seen in my life. At least The Room is funny yep. in how bad it was. It became a cult classic. And then I just love. Oh, uh, the Emperor is not dead, actually, and nope. the last Jedi didn't matter, and he's here. And my favorite part about it is he like he wants to be Rey. Like the Emperor is like, I'm going to be a young woman, <laughs> and then he's like, Strike me down, and I will possess your body. And then she goes, Never. Ah, and then she strikes him down. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, I, it, and he kills himself. At no, the end. no, he becomes Rey. Like he said, Yeah, it, the it, way the way he set it up, you're right. He he should have won at that point, and he but, didn't. Or did he? Uh, who knows? Maybe, Based on maybe, maybe he was transitioned. 
He did. But yeah, that was the weird thing to me when he was like, I will take over your body. I'm like, that's really weird. It is. Yes. The emperor was trans the whole time, and that was the that was a character arc. He wants to be a young woman. Mm. And, what, and then I guess he wins, though, because she, she kills him. So, yep. And then I, kisses she, Kylo Ren. Uh, <laughs> weird. Well, that weird. was the emperor the whole time was just like, <laughs> that Han Solo is kind of hot. Yep. <laughs> and then you get, you know, Han Solo dies. And then he's like, well, he still has a son. Do it. Ugh. He looks him in the eyes. Do it. All right, all right. Uh, Falcon Ray's, Falconizer says, Nerdrotic, Geeks and Gamers, and Tim Cass need to team up to make sci-fi content. We cannot depend on the entertainment industry to entertain us anymore, so we have to make our own entertainment. I'm down. Um, I've been saying before, we want, we want to do like a, a comics section, kind of like Shonen Jump, where we do like, like a few weekly releases of uh, various series, uh, series, series, series. So if you know people who have um, good story ideas and they want to just start cranking out weekly chapters or something, we'd be down. I'd be down for that. I don't know if you guys are there. Are uh, there are hundreds of them out there? Hundreds, I, hundreds, thousands. Got to find the good one. Uh, you got to find the good one though. So yeah, I mean, they send me stuff. If I saw something great, I'd send it your way. Make sure it's good. Yeah. Uh, make sure it's really, really good. Uh, I, I, I basically just. I think the comics are all regurgitated at this point. I'm not entertained by them. I used to love the Justice League so much. The stories were just big fan, and the X Men when I was little. Now I'm all I I started to get get into manga and anime, and now I just think they're doing a better job. My Hero Academia, Academia does superheroes better than comics today. I mean, you got you got that's just it's kind of amazing. That's the case. Yeah, I I wouldn't read manga or watch anime for the law. I mean, I like some of the anime, but manga I would not read for one. It's reading backwards. And I never, you know, <laughs> I was, a, I was an American comic book snob, but they, I, I people have sent it Come to on. me and I finally, I'm into death it now. Note. Yeah. D uh, death notes. Good. I like death note a lot. I like uh, attack on Titan. Uh, I haven't, I haven't watched a whole lot of that. Somebody sent me a bunch of, uh, uh, one piece. So I'm getting into that right now. I've, I've got, I, I haven't gotten into that. You know, the problem is it's so big. I'm kind of like, Ugh. it's big. Yeah. I, it's taken me a little while to even figure out what's going on. And then they finally sent me a, a Blu-ray of, uh, my hero academia, which my kid has been trying to get me to watch. It's, it's I, brilliant. I, I, yeah. I really like, I, I think they do superhero so much better than yep. and it's, it's original, you know, and to see, to, to see anime doing original, uh, uh, uh superhero stuff. I'm just like, man, where, where are you at America? They gave it up. They had it. They, they, we, we created this stuff in the 50s, the, the golden age, all this stuff, these superheroes, and now it's just trash. Just Stan Lee. Uh, just one guy yeah. can do well, that again. Japan is so again. far behind because, um, well, I mean, there are gay characters in there, but not everybody's gay. So once everybody's gay in, uh, in manga, then they'll catch up to America. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff, you know. Um, but I definitely would like to, to, to make some comics, um, you know, ha have some of that content and maybe even make our own shows and stuff when we get to that point. There's a, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that I, I haven't been watching a whole lot recently. But um, someone mentioned Era Fuera, I think, Fu Fuera, I'm pronouncing it wrong, I don't know, it was a show I watched a, a big chunk of until I reached the, the uh, I watched every episode until the latest, and then I'm like, okay, I binged it, now i got to wait for them to do up more episodes. Uh, Black Clover, a lot of fun. I guess people don't like it. I thought it was cool. My Hero Academia, I thought it was really great. The, the uh, man, I used to read every single Naruto when it came out every Wednesday at the Scanlation every Wednesday for years. So I'd be totally down to make some fun new cultural content and do these uh, comics. Did you see the uh, Donald, Donald Trump and the Death Note one shot? No. They made a legitimate canon Death Note chapter with Donald Trump in it. No way. Yeah. So it's basically a kid gets the Death Note and decides to sell it to and Donald Trump is like. America will give you, you know, fifty <laughs> trillion dollars, something like that. It's 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 good. I thought it was great. All right, let's see what we got. Spider Bro says, "Hey guys, huge fan, and you're right. Me and my cousin tried to get breakfast at IHOP, Denny's, and Waffle House. Both IHOP and Denny's were closed, and Waffle House was uh, only taking to-go orders because they only had two employees." Geez. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's brutal, dude. This is stuff I have never seen. I mean, it's, this is, uh, yeah, this is kind of the, the, the beginning, uh, the breaking down. You know, when you see the, the organized uh, gangs going in and, you know, shoplifting out of Walgreens. Yep. I saw one guy, uh, oh, you might, I, I won't repeat his name here. He retweeted and saying, oh, well, you know, this is what you get when uh, the chain markets come in and take over the mom and pops. He's not totally wrong, but this is happening to the mom and pops in San Francisco too. They're just not videoing yeah. that. That's, it's happening to them too. Uh, that's just, that's society breaking down. That's that's the beginning. Darth Meerkat says, "I can't wait. I can't wait to play the division IRL." 
<sighs> Have you played the division? Uh uh-uh. uh. It's about a, a, a pandemic that like oh, wipes okay. out a bunch of the cities, and then you're in the in part one. You're in New York, and it's pretty cool to be in Manhattan. And it's like an apocalypse, and there's a like rogue factions start taking over. So firefighters start like they mm-hmm. they actually take flamethrowers and become actual firemen, and they're trying to purge the the disease, and they end up going crazy and just killing anybody. They're like it's too risky. They're infected. You have regular gangs. You have paramilitary groups. It's a fun. It was a fun game. And then in uh, part two, that you're in DC. And it's like you're in the White House and it's abandoned. Yeah, fun game, fun oh, game. Plus, that. you get real guns. Like the guns are all based off of real guns, so it's it's you know it's fun. All right, uh, Sarah St- uh, uh, Stathatos says George, 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 huh. George, George. Uh-huh. Thank you for the big super chats Thanks. to say George. <laughs> Dragon. Dragon Balls Deep says, good name. <laughs> nice. Tim, given all the gun stuff y'all do, you uh, must get in contact with Mike Glover of FCS. He's the real up. deal. Yeah. Also, I want to see Dave Smith versus Vosh debate. Love the show. Shout out to Ian. Yo. Be good, be yeah. good. Uh, I'd totally be down to host Dave and Vosh. That'd be fantastic. But I feel like, you know, is Vosh the only one willing to actually sit down and express himself, you know, his ideas? He does a good job of, of giving his ideas. A lot of people think he's, he's wrong, but I can respect that. He's, if he wants to come and speak. And, he'd be, and be wrong as a brave and be thing wrong yeah but I, I don't think he's completely wrong I think we agree with him on a lot of stuff a I think things, there's yeah. yeah there's just like core issues we, we clearly don't agree with I think most Americans regardless of your beliefs agree on like an overwhelming majority of things but it'd be nice to get someone else on the left to actually want to come and have these conversations the problem is there's two kinds of people on the left who want to come on the show outside of Vosh either people who are small and don't have big channels can't really articulate the thoughts as well and are just trying to get some kind of, you know, notoriety. Wow. Yeah. And people who are grifters who want to come on and do stupid things to make a scene and then get us in trouble and then make yeah. viral content for themselves. We should have Andrew Yang on. He sent us a gift. He sent a book to the. He did, but it came with like a generic print instead of like a signature. <laughs> okay. Aww. Like you can, you can sign the books and just go like. That's this, cool. He know? sent us a book. We he, he should probably come on. It was probably a PR he's not, person. He's not on the left, but he's kind of like can represent that. He quit the Democratic Party. That's pretty big. The Forward yeah. Party. Yeah, the Forward Party. Oh, he did, huh? Yeah. 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 We well, tried to have him on a while ago, and he said he, he he would try to do it, but then he got way too big, way too fast. Because I was a big fan. I, I donated the max to, to Yang. In in the early days, I was like, this dude has got a huge list of comprehensive policies, and he's right about a lot of it. He was fairly moderate, and he actually looked at he looked at tons of different areas where he thought he had ideas. And then he just kind of just started playing ball with the Democratic Party, yep. trying to get support. And I was like, he worked, yeah, I he heard wor- he worked for CNN. Yeah. Yep. Um, I would love to talk to him. <laughs> oh, and I, I have a different point of view than Tim. Yeah. Scott Anderson says, Luke, 1,000 yards forever. What's the current rate for 50 BMG? Got a story for you, Tim. What is the best way to get to one of your reporters? Um, I think it's what tips at TimCast.com? Probably. Info. I have no idea. Uh, you can email pitches at TimCast.com. We're really trying to, you know, we got to we gotta get to that point. I try to let you guys know, like, um, a lot of the stuff that we're, we're, we're doing outside of the show is, like, we're investing in. Like, doing new shows, like, it's not easy to just make a show and then try and make money doing it, mm-hmm. you know? So we're really hoping that other shows can become, you know, new ways to get new people to be involved and things like that. But uh, we're, we're working. We're growing. All right, let's read a couple more, just because we did talk quite a bit. Jerry Latt says, hey, Tim, 10 years working maintenance on metal container closing machines. The information on this process at times can be esoteric. I imagine it could be useful to your future endeavors. I'm willing to give advice and help you choose that path to work on uh, metal container closing machines. Maybe for Freedomistan, we could use something like that. I do. we, We do have a nice little hill. And I was like, we could bury like we could get like three shipping containers and just bury them. And then have three little like little dorm like hangout places, or make them stores. Mm-hmm. You know, they have like the town. I would love to have like a little a little western town, like the sheriff and like oh, oh, general that'd be store. Cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Free down the stand. All right, we'll just do a, a, a couple more here. All right, let's see. I don't know what that means, so I can't read it. Mm-hmm. R. Barrett says, let's talk about some Bond R.I.P. or how they are systematically killing strong male characters like He-Man, Bond, Indiana Jones, etc. Mm. Yes, that's what I was talking about with uh, Luke Skywalker. That was uh, the beginning, the beginning. It started a little before The Last Jedi, everything that's going on, but it's very deliberate. And it's I guess it's only deliberate to like hardcore nerds who like not only just pay attention 
to Star Wars. They pay attention to the whole realm. So uh, when they see something similar happening to Picard and to James Bond and to Luke Skywalker and to Captain America and to Iron Man, they tend to start thinking that there's something nefarious going on. And, and there is, there is, there's a, since the time's up, uh, me too time's up little moment in Hollywood after Harvey Weinstein, huh. it was a huge power shift. And what they decided to stop doing is uh, they start, they started writing uh, basically uh, Marxist PowerPoints. And it sounds insane. It does. It absolutely does. Until you see the paperwork, until you see that um, not, not even, not only just BLM, but it sounds like it's from BLM. You have the Roddenberry foundation that's owned by, uh, you know, uh, Roddenberry's kid, his heir, and there's a ton of money in there and it's supposed to be a workshop for writers, uh, Gene Roddenberry. And they made up some paperwork basically on what you can and can't write in Hollywood anymore. And wow. you can't write, uh, I mean, some of the stuff actually sounds like it's sure it makes sense because it's not the 50s anymore, but some of it is nuts. They tell you how you can write uh, a hand capable person and how you can't write. They can no longer be the person who overcomes their handicap. You cannot write that anymore. <laughs> they revel in it, I guess. They yeah, suffer. yeah. It's supposed to be bad. It's a bad stereotype. So anything that perpetuates a stereotype is gone from Hollywood. You can't show uh, a, a woman or a man mentoring a woman in mm. any way, shape or form anymore. A woman can mentor a man, but you cannot portray a man mentoring a woman. Can we, do you have a list of these rules? Yeah, I can send them to you. Why don't we make a short film that violates every rule? That would be yeah. brilliant. A, be handi brilliant. A, a handicapped man who really wants to mentor a woman, but he, he overcomes his handicap to become the best mentor she's ever had. Yes. I, I would love that. <laughs> it, woke, everything woke. I mean, it's so it's so ripe for being made fun of. Yeah, it's great. I, I mean, Saturday Night Live writing that they were good and they haven't been for decades. If they made fun of what culture would be the most watched thing on broadcast TV. We, we have had requests of doing uh, like sketch comedy stuff. So we could certainly start doing stuff like that. That'd be fun. I think that'd be a great idea because there's like low hanging fruit everywhere with. with I mean, more. Ryan Long nails it. Yep. He, he, he nails it consistently. We should totally be doing similar stuff. Check out Ryan Long. Check out. Have you seen Kyle Dunnigan? Uh -uh. Yeah, he's great with oh. us with uh, Star Trek. Uh, he, what, are the, what are those episodes called? Uh, Blarp Trek. No, Star I forgot Boat. Uh, Star Boat. Yeah, and, there you go, Star Boat. It, and yeah. then it's, uh, they were originally called something else, but it, well, you can't, it's not, it's not good for the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He also does the best Biden impression I've ever yeah, seen. He's great. And there's a quick skit where uh, Biden sees himself in the mirror and, he, and it confuses him. And he starts, he's like, who are you? <laughs> That's See that great. skit. Yeah, Kyle Dunnigan's genius. I, I think, great. you know, we've got, we've got uh, a couple shows in the works that are like tentative. But I think we should start doing sketches, even yeah. if we just start with like once a week and then and then get something rolling. That would be hilarious. That'd even so if they're fun. not that good. I mean, we used to do them back in the day. Right, they were we not did. good, but they were funny. <laughs> Actually, we're good. They were good. Uh, they were like just like yeah. amateurishly like produced, it. but it was yeah. funny <laughs> when Luke was vomiting. Yeah. And then in the bathroom, farting oh, his yeah. brains out. Yeah. Like we had a lot of fun with that. That yeah, was great. Yeah. We did a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, uh, we did. <laughs> we did another one that never aired when we were testing less lethal munitions oh, uh, on each other. Oh, well, that wasn't and, a skit though. That was just us getting tear gassed in a garage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was pretty funny though. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right, everybody. If you haven't already, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the show with your friends. And uh, we should have an episode of The Green Room in the member section. So if you go to TimCast.com and you click Members Only, you'll now actually start seeing different shows emerging because we want to we wanna be better than Netflix. We are going to build an independent streaming service. We've got Tales from the Inverted World. Just getting the ball rolling on this one, guys. The next episode that's coming up Sunday morning Ooh. is a true crime mystery about the Irish mafia and a murder. So cool. We've also got Shane, the, 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 the host and the writer. He's going down to Georgia looking up old Confederate Civil War ghost stories, trying to track down old Confederate gold and all these crazy stories are going to be awesome. And we're going to have like a huge arc of these creepy... Oh, it's just going to be fantastic. And we're going to have members-only content from that, exploring the stories around it and having these conversations. So we're definitely trying to do a lot. Right now, it's, it's like podcast. It's relatively low budget to produce. It is kind of expensive to bring out guests, but we don't need a million dollars to make an episode like you know Game of Thrones, which required, I think it was like $4 million or something. Mm. So was it four million? 
four to ten. Four to ten. So yeah. we don't have that. <laughs> but there are a lot of shows that we really do want to do. So maybe we'll get to that point if we get more and more members, we'll be able to fund our own shows. And then just think in five years we'll have a big library of content. We'll have comics and books and music, and it'll all just tell these weird woke, you know, losers to like screw off. We're doing our own thing. So thank you all for supporting the show. Again, smash that like button. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL, but not on TikTok where we're banned. You can follow me at Timcast everywhere else. Uh, do you want to shout anything? Uh, shout, shout anything out, Gary. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at uh, Nerdrotic. I do uh, a Friday night show that you can watch right before you tune into Timcast nice. IRL called Friday Night Tights that I do with geeks and gamers and heel versus babyface. And uh, Court of Black Garrett is there. Nice. Carter, so oh, check cool. it out. Uh, thanks for having me. If you want to support me, you can on thebestpoliticalshirts.com or lukeuncensored.com. Uh, either way, I have a lot of fun here. I have a lot of things I want to say, and I'm still censoring myself, just so you know. <laughs> Remember that you can put a Captain America costume on a donkey and call it Captain America, but it doesn't make it Captain That's America. Right. That's mm-hmm. right. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Happy to be here, everyone. Check me out at True. iancrossland.net. Ian, truer words have never been spoken. Oh, thank you, too. Very true. Agreed. Yeah, for sure. Thank you guys for tuning in for this nerdy Friday night. I feel like we hit the balance between news and nerdiness just right. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You guys may follow me on Twitter at Sour Patch Kids and on Instagram at Real Sour Patch Lids. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Also, check out YouTube.com slash Cast Castle. All of our episodes have a funny little animated skit. You, you, you got to see them. And what, do you remember what the episode is called where you find the Alex Jones mushroom? Because that's like the best one ever. Not offhand, but it was last week. You guys got to watch it until you find it because it's a, ca- it's a cartoon of Ian finding the screaming <laughs> Alex Jones mushroom, and Love it's really, it. really funny. So thanks for hanging out, everybody, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.